The head of the FDA, meanwhile, said the agency will move quickly to authorize the second COVID-19 vaccine to fight the pandemic. He says regulators have spoken with Moderna, which co-developed the vaccine with the National Institutes of Health. This comes after a panel of FDA advisors ruled that the benefits of the vaccine outweighed the risks for those 18 years and older. In sports, all players on the UMaine men's ice hockey team are quarantining. University officials have announced a positive case through antigen testing. All team activities have been halted. Coaches and staff were not considered close contacts. The women's team will still head to Providence this weekend for two games against the Friars. Meanwhile, the UMaine men's basketball team is set to tip off its season this Saturday and Sunday down in Hartford. The Black Bears have yet to play a game this season due to COVID concerns. And in the NFL, the Los Angeles Chargers beat the Las Vegas Raiders 30-27 to last night. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. If you've checked that gift list twice and got something different for everyone on it, just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassarboro Town Line. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Are you worried about spending too much? Townline Antiques is here to help with that too. Because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 40, some even 50% off their selection. There's always new, cool, and unique gift ideas, including collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and so much more. Of course, the problem is, you'll not only find lots of great gift ideas, you'll come across things you may want to take home too. But with their December sale of up to 50% off store-wide, you can take them all home for less. So don't miss out on this Santa size sale with savings up to 50% off this December at Townline Antiques. Open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 5, Route 201, right on the Winslow Vassarboro Town Line. Hi, I'm CJ McKenna, Assistant Dean of Enrollment at Kennebec Valley Community College. Have you been thinking about attending KVCC and need a little nudge? In my position at the college, I have the opportunity to help students begin, continue, or complete a degree. These students are just like you, many balancing multiple responsibilities in addition to their classes. Whether you want to enroll full-time, part-time, or have a conversation about your options, I am here to help. Call me at 453-KVCC, and we can work together to accomplish your educational goals. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go, take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. M O. O-D-Y Your kid was talking on the cell phone Drove right through your own home Sitting in the parking lot Maybe you get hit a lot Driving through the green light Suddenly your side swipe Put it in reverse But it turned out that it was first Take it to Moody's Take it to Moody's Collision Centers I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Some clouds to start this morning, then becoming mostly sunny. Still cool today with highs in the mid to upper 20s. Partly sunny tomorrow, highs in the low 30s. Cloudy mid 30s on Sunday with a chance for a scattered rain or snow shower in the afternoon and evening. Highs near 40 for the start of next week. Thank you, Lexi. Clear skies. It's 10 in Skowhegan, 12 in Waterville. We've also got clear skies, 12 degrees here in Augusta. And you're up to date. From Legacy 1160, WSKW. His mediocre high school academic achievements have prepared him nicely for a career in radio. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, sir. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160, WSKW. Good morning. Thank Buddha. It's Friday. And we do. TBIF, baby. 611, Friday, December 18th, 2020. I'm Mike Violet. And we're underway officially. The show brought to you by... Kennebec Electric and Lighting, 861-7028 online, kennebecelectric.com. Live stream us, 24-7-365. Go to legacy1160.com. Click on the Listen Live button brought to you by the Harry J. Smith Company, Sanger Avenue in Waterville. And you can see us and hear us on Facebook Live and YouTube. That's brought to you by Moody's Collision Center. As usual... On TBIF, an all-star lineup of guests this morning. Leading off, Ken Altshuler, that's a wrap, followed by Dean Scontras and Contact Sports. Then all sports in the eight 
with Travis Lasargic, the sitting and standing main sports writer of the year. So that's the deal there. Lots to get to. It's time. You know the drill. Let's get cracking. Hashtag what? They didn't really say that, did they? Even while I was on vacation, I woke up in the middle of the night at 3.30 in the morning um, just concerned about climate change. It's hashtags and hot takes on the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. All righty, item number one. You heard John Crisos, who's pinch hitting for Jeff today, obviously, tell you about this in our real news update. The feds have told the Maine Center for Disease Control that the number of Pfizer vaccines available to the state next week is going to be 40% lower than expected. Operation Warp Speed, the Trump administration's program for accelerating the development and the distribution of the vaccine, notified the state of Maine and the CDC and other health departments around the nation without any warning or any explanation that shipments could and would be significantly fewer doses than originally anticipated. So the final number of available Pfizer doses for week two of the vaccination launch will be 8,775 doses, which the CDC said represents a 36% decline from the about 13,650 doses we were expected to get. No, again, explanation at all here, according to the main CDC or at the Fed level with Operation Warp Speed. Kind of weird, don't you think? I don't know what's going on. Again, no explanation. I'm not sure if there is some sort of problem with getting these vaccinations feathered out all over the country. It is a huge, huge operation. I mean, if you, you, you think about it, I think about it in terms of like prepping for a war. Can you imagine Ike and Bradley and Patton and company planning, and I mean this, D-Day, seriously, and everything you need to do, the logistics. Well, this war on COVID, pretty much the same thing. And I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm being a drama queen here. But hopefully this is just a temporary one-shot deal thing that isn't going to hold things up that much longer. Meantime, there is more help on the way because the FDA, that panel, has recommended approving the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. That was given the okay by a vote of 20 to nothing by a panel of experts on Thursday. So a 20 nothing vote, the Vaccines and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee agreed the vaccine should be made available to help battle the coronavirus. The FDA is expected to give the green light very quickly for emergency use of authorization of the shot. So we're going to get plenty more of this coming up. Now, the question is, do you feel like you need to get a shot? What's the downside? Is there any criticism of this? Because the rollout, as we're going to hear in the sound segment at 638, is all positive all the time. We'll get to this with Tucker in the sound segment at 638. I'm kind of ambivalent about it at this point in time. I mean, I know I'm in the moderate risk category, which gets me higher on the list, maybe than you. Not that I'm trying to play a game of one-upmanship here, but I'm not even sure. You know, I just, I'm kind of ambivalent about it. All right. The deal makers in Washington in the Senate, Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer, and of course, Nancy Pelosi, Kevin McCarthy and company in the House of Representatives. Well, Mitch McConnell said yesterday the Senate is highly likely to work through the weekend. All the poor dears as congressional leaders scramble to reach a deal on a government funding measure and a coronavirus relief package. Here's cocaine Mitch. We're going to stay right here, right here until we're finished, even if that means working through the weekend, which is highly likely. So the deal on the deal is this, was when it comes to keeping the government afloat financially, they got to get a deal done by the end of business tomorrow. Here's more Mitch. Bipartisan, bicameral committee work has full year government funding legislation on the one yard line. That's great. Good. But of course, it's much bigger than that, according to Chuck U. Schumer. We need a cult coronavirus relief bill. We are putting the final touches on what would be the largest stimulus in the history of the country, with the exception of the CARES Act. 
Okay, so the word around D.C. apparently is the president had to be talked out of a $2,000 direct payment to Americans. Now, I'm not going to look a $2,000 gift horse in the mouth, but the president was apparently talked out of that, getting that in the deal. From what we are hearing, it's going to be $600. And again, you have to say, at what point... Have we reached the point of no return when it comes to direct payments to Americans? I think there ought to be much more emphasis on that. If we're going to come up with a COVID and coronavirus relief package, there ought to be much more emphasis on that, on the direct payment to everyday Americans and everyday small business owners than any other part of the population. More on this with Ken and Dino coming up later this morning, and that's a wrap, and also in contact sports. Hack job, baby. Federal authorities are expressing increased alarm about a long undetected intrusion into U.S. and other computer systems around the world that officials suspect was carried out by the Russians. The nation's cybersecurity agency warning of a grave risk to government and private networks. The hack compromised federal agencies and critical infrastructure in a sophisticated attack that was hard to detect and apparently is going to be difficult to undo. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency said in an unusual warning message on Thursday, the Department of Energy acknowledging it was among those that had been hacked. You'd think that the feds would have, you know, a little better firewall up around their stuff computer-wise than you do with your computer. Yet my computer's never been hacked, and the Department of Energy's has. Crazy, crazy stuff. Can't be allowed to happen. Shouldn't be allowed to happen. I love how the Biden people are making a big deal out of this, like this kind of thing could never happen under old Uncle Perv's leadership. Okay, that snowstorm that hit us yesterday? Well, I say us around here, not really a big deal. What'd we get? In the Augusta Waterville Skowhegan area, anywhere from three to six, seven inches. But man, in some places, three feet, six or seven inches an hour. Portland, 17.6 inches of snow. Limerick and Newfield down in York County, 26 inches of snow. Gorham, not far behind, 24 inches of snow. Of course, they didn't get that much up north and west, where, of course, it is white gold up there, but still enough champagne powder in places where it counts to really get the winter sporting season off on a good note. And as far as I'm concerned, just another snowstorm in Maine. It's Maine. It's December. It snows. All right, let's go to Phippsburg and the heavy-handed tactics of the Mills administration. After weeks of bucking Governor Mills' mask mandate, Pittsburgh selectmen last night or a Wednesday night voted unanimously to give in and comply with the governor's executive order requiring people to wear face masks in all public buildings. Why? Well, apparently they were influenced by warnings from the attorney general, Aaron Fry, and Jessica Mayer, the town attorney, In Phippsburg, the board rescinded its previous policy, which strongly encouraged people to wear face masks, but did not require them. But in a December 14th letter to the board, the Attorney General Aaron Fry wrote that Governor Mills' executive order makes the board legally obligated to require the use of face coverings in all municipal buildings that are accessible to the public, including parking lots and waiting areas and so forth and so on. And then he... Uh, She wrote, the city attorney wrote, the town attorney wrote that any local policy that conflicts with the governor's executive order would be preempted by the governor's executive order. So the Mills administration is watching, believe me, they spend an inordinate amount of time trying to find out and figure out ways to take away your civil rights. And I give it up to the town of Phippsburg for pushing it to some extreme, but not enough. I mean, seriously, what would have happened to the town's 
any town here that decided they weren't going to go along with this. Janet Mills going to send Aaron Fry down there and bust everyone? Are they going to shut down every... Well, I was going to say, are they going to shut down every business? Knowing the Mills administration, they'd give it their best shot. Thursday night football last night in the NFL. They went to overtime in Las Vegas. And the Chargers beat the Raiders by a final of 30-27. to 27. I know Jeff Peterson crying in his beer this morning as he has the morning off. I don't know if it's because his beloved Raiders lost. They also lost their quarterback, Derek Carr, in this game early in the first quarter. Rookie sensation Justin Herbert throwing for 314 yards and two touchdowns. The Raiders did score a field goal in the overtime, but the Chargers answered with a touchdown. End of ball game right there. Raiders probably out of it now at 7-7, seven and seven, the Chargers 5-9. and nine. And, of course, the Patriots at 6-7. and seven. They're still in it, although probably out of it. They're in Miami on Sunday to take on the Dolphins. That'll be a 1 o'clock start on Sunday afternoon. Right now, the Dolphins are a point-and-a-half pick in that game. And that is hashtags and hot takes for this morning. It's Friday. It's a thank Buddha. It's Friday. Friday, Friday, December 18th, 2020. We do this every Monday through Friday, right after the 6 o'clock news. Now your political insights from ABC News. Congress's physician's office telling members in both the House and Senate that their staffs will be getting the vaccine due to continuity of government, meaning that it's more important for them not to get the virus so federal business continues uninterrupted. Speaker Pelosi and Republican Senate Leader McConnell announcing they'll get their vaccine soon. Most Americans must wait months for their shots, as health care workers and those in nursing homes are at the front of the line. House members will get a closed-door explanation of how another government compromised computers across U.S. federal agencies and exactly what information they were able to steal. Homeland Security has already told many of those agencies exactly how hackers infiltrated what were supposed to be secure networks and what steps they can take now to prevent further attacks. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he believes Congress is close to a deal on a new COVID-19 relief package. Those are your political insights. I'm Andy Field, ABC News. Season's greetings from the Shibley family and Bob's Cash Fuel. If quality and reliability for all of your home heating and cooling needs is important to you, then choose Bob's Cash Fuel in Madison. Starting out with just one truck for deliveries in 1981, they've continued to grow to a locally owned and operated full-service company, offering experience and a staff of trusted and loyal professionals. Bob's Cash Fuel offers heating oil, kerosene, diesel, gasoline, propane, and 24-hour emergency service for heating and cooling. And now with their new app, you can order fuel right from your phone, check account information and delivery status, make a payment, and more. Download the app at the App Store today. Bob's Cash Fuel also offers emergency oil and propane delivery to all of their customers. Not sure what to get someone this holiday season? Give them a gift card that can be used for any product or service at Bob's Cash Fuel. To heat or cool and propane too, call Bob's Cash Fuel. Happy holidays from Bob's Gas Fuel, Route 148 in Madison, your System 2000 premier dealer. Ho, ho, hold up. The year is ending already, and we're way behind. We've got to do something fast so we won't hit our year-end goal. So this month, we're slaying prices. Don't wait for the jolly old elf, because right now, Santa Joey at Cobra Mitsubishi will give you 4000 minimum for your old sled. Drive away in a brand new 2020 Mitsubishi Mirage with no money down for 179 a month. Or choose a new 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross or Mitsubishi Outlander Sport with no money down for $299 a month. Choose our top-of-the-line model, the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander with room for seven with no money down for only $320 a month. These are purchases, not leases. That's a brand new vehicle with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited power train warranty with no down payment are other dealers roasting your chestnuts over past credit mishaps let us help you beat the holiday blues and drive home a new mitsubishi today come visit us at cobrick mitsubishi route 201 in skowhegan or visit us online at cobrickmitsubishi.com if you've checked that gift list twice and it's got something different for everyone on it, just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassaboro Town Line. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Are you worried about spending too much? Well, don't. Townline Antiques is here to help you with that, too. Because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 
40 and yes, even 50% off their selection. There's always new, cool, and unique gift ideas, including things like collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and so much more. Of course, the problem is you'll not only find lots of great gift ideas, you'll come across things that you may want to take home too. But with their December sale of up to 50% off store wide, you can take them home, all of them, for less. So don't miss out on this Santa size sale with savings of up to 50% off this December at Townline Antiques. Open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 5 on Route 201 right on the Winslow Vassarboro town line. Ho, ho, hold up. The year is ending already and we're way behind. We've got to do something fast and we won't hit our year-end goal. So this month we're slaying prices. Don't wait for the jolly old elf because right now Santa Joey at Colebrook Mitsubishi will give you 4000 minimum for your old sled. Drive away in a brand new 2020 Mitsubishi Mirage with no money down for 179 a month. Or choose a new 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross or Mitsubishi Outlander Sport with no money down for $299 a month. Choose our top of the line model, the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander with room for seven with no money down for only $320 a month. These are purchases, not leases. That's a brand new vehicle with a 10-year 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty with no down payment. Are other dealers roasting your chestnuts over past credit mishaps? Let us help you beat the holiday blues and drive home a new Mitsubishi today. Come visit us at Cobrook Mitsubishi Route 201 in Skowhegan or visit us online at CobrookMitsubishi.com. 628, good morning. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Big day is a week from today, of course. It is Friday, December 18th, 2020. TBIF, baby. And Buddha brings a veritable cornucopia of all-star guests to the Mike Violet Show. 708, that's a wrap. Ken Altshuler, 738. The world of sports and politics collide. It's contact sports with Dean Scontras. And then after the 8 o'clock news, we go all sports with the sitting and standing main sports writer of the year, Travis Lasargent. Ah, Friday, I am so in love with you. That's all coming up this morning. Short term, though, we'll get a real news update from CBS 13's John Crisos, who's in for Jeff Peterson this morning. And CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor's got the forecast for the weekend. Sound segments after that. I'm Mike Violet. Mike Violet Show live on Legacy, as opposed to being on tape, on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Crisos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. This morning we're learning that Maine will get 40% fewer doses of Pfizer vaccine in next week's shipment. Operation Warp Speed told the CDC it'll get 8,700 doses instead of 13,600. A Maine CDC spokesperson said Operation Warp Speed did not provide an explanation for the reduction, but it means the state won't have enough doses to vaccinate residents and staff at all long-term care facilities in Maine. The head of the FDA, meanwhile, says his agency will move quickly to authorize the second COVID-19 vaccine to fight the pandemic. He says regulators have spoken with Moderna, which co-developed the vaccine with the National Institutes of Health. This comes after a panel of FDA advisors ruled that the benefits of the vaccine outweighed the risks for those 18 years and older. In sports, all players on the UMaine men's ice hockey team are quarantining. University officials have announced a positive case through antigen testing. All team activities have been halted. Coaches and staff were not considered close contacts. The women's team will still head to Providence this weekend for two games against the Friars. Meanwhile, the UMaine men's basketball team is set to tip off its season this Saturday and Sunday down in Hartford. The Black Bears have yet to play a game this season due to COVID concerns. And in the NFL, the Los Angeles Chargers beat the Las Vegas Raiders 30-27 to last night. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Don't let the year end without using the HSA dollars in your account. Contact Kennebec Eye Care in Waterville. Wouldn't you love to have new glasses, sunglasses, or computer glasses? How about a backup pair for emergencies? An extra pair to leave at work? Dr. Peter Parody, Dr. Kerry Kaplan, and Dr. Leslie Sobeck will expertly fit you with correct eyeglasses or contacts. So contact Kennebec Eye Care today, 216 Main Street in Waterville, online at KennebecEyeCare.com. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go, take it to Moody's. 
you wanna get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust, and it won't be a fuss. Take it to Moody's. Collision centers. M O O D Y. Your kid was talking on the cell phone, drove right through your own home, sitting in the parking lot. Maybe you get hit a lot, driving through the green light. Suddenly your side swipe, put it in reverse, but it turned out that it was first. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. Hi, it's Doug and Dan from Generators of Maine in Belgrade. Are you working from home? Will your children be home doing schoolwork? And you know how important it is to have access to the reliable power source. That's why you need a Kohler Generator from Generators of Maine. Kohler Generators deliver reliable power whenever yours goes out. And we're always happy to offer delivery and installation. Get prepared today for those upcoming power outages with a Kohler Generator from Generators of Maine. Stop by our location in Belgrade. Visit online at generatorsofmaine.com and like us on Facebook. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Some clouds to start this morning, then becoming mostly sunny. Still cool today with highs in the mid to upper 20s. Partly sunny tomorrow, highs in the low 30s. Cloudy mid 30s on Sunday with a chance for a scattered rain or snow shower in the afternoon and evening. Highs near 40 for the start of next week. All right, Lexi, clear. It's 11 in Skowhegan, 12 in Waterville. Clear, 12 degrees here. In Augusta, you're up to date from Legacy 1160 WSKW. It's like your father is on the radio every day. When I was 17, I drank some very good beer. I drank some very good beer I purchased with a fake ID. My name was Brian McKee. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Good morning. It's 830. Excuse me. <laughs> Slow down. It's 634. I'm Mike Violet. Welcome to a Thank Buddha. It's Friday, Friday. It's Friday, December 18th, 2020. The Mike Violet Show is brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting, 861-7028. Find them online at kennebecelectric.com. You can find this show on our website, Legacy1160.com, to live stream, brought to you by the Harry J. Smith Company, Sanger Avenue in Waterville, and we're on Facebook Live and YouTube as well. That's brought to you by Moody's Collision Center. As always, a thank Buddha. It's Friday. Friday means that's a wrap with Ken Altshuler, 708. Contact Sports Dean Scotra, 738. We go all sports with a sitting and standing main sports writer of the year, Travis Lasargic. After the 8 o'clock news, Tucker Carlson, last night, all right, everybody's getting the COVID vaccine, although ours is cut for whatever reason, 40%, but you'll be able to get it at some point soon enough. The question is, should we question the coronavirus vaccine? That's what Tucker hit on last night on the Tucker Carlson show. Coronavirus vaccine is finally here. It's arriving in small bottles, but with a glitzy entrance. The coronavirus vaccine has been accompanied by the kind of corporate image campaign you typically associate with higher end consumer products. Imagine the rollout for a Hollywood blockbuster, the new iPhone. That's what it's like. Suddenly the COVID vaccine is on the morning shows. It's being touted on celebrity Twitter accounts and the news about it is uniformly glowing. This stuff is just great. A lot of famous people say so. Just the other day, the guy who played Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings series got the vaccine. As on any media tour, the paparazzi were there for the dramatic moment when they stuck the needle in his arm. It's a very special day, the Gandalf actor told Reuters. I feel euphoric. I would have no hesitation in recommending it to anyone. I feel very lucky to have had the vaccination. In other words, tastes great, less filling. He is indeed a very lucky man. And you will feel lucky too when you finally get the vaccine. That's how a healthcare worker in Juneau, Alaska feels tonight, lucky. She got the vaccine two days ago. The woman had no history of allergies, but within minutes she developed a severe anaphylactic reaction to it and then had trouble breathing. She wound up in the emergency room overnight. It was all a fantastic experience, according to the doctor who treated her. Quote, during the whole time, she was still enthusiastic that she got the vaccine and the benefits it would give her in the future. What a cheerful patient she must be. We've got to assume she is in any case because we can't really know. The authorities didn't release her name. All we know is she's a highly satisfied customer. Yet another. Have a vaccine and a smile. Just do it. 
So how are the rest of us supposed to respond to a marketing campaign like this? Well, nervously. Even if you're strongly supportive of vaccines, and we are, even if you recognize how many millions of lives have been saved over the past 50 years by vaccines, and we do, it all seems a bit much. It feels false because it is. It's too slick. The Gandalf guy was euphoric because he got a shot. It wasn't heroin. It was the corona vaccine. The lady who couldn't breathe as enthusiastic as she is rushed to the emergency room? Come on. This is patronizing. Stop with the slogans. Better to treat Americans like adults. Explain the benefits, be honest about the risks, and let the rest of us decide. In this country, we control our own bodies. They're always telling us that. But no, suddenly the rules have changed. On the question of the corona vaccine, our leaders are definitely not pro-choice. Their view is do what you're told and don't complain. No uncomfortable questions. Those aren't just suggestions. They're rules and Silicon Valley plans to enforce them. Twitter's announced a new policy to censor any unauthorized inquiry about the vaccine, or as the company put it, false or misleading narratives about COVID-19 vaccinations. Among other things, Twitter is censoring any claim that this vaccine might be used to, quote, control populations. So whatever you do, don't say this is social control, because if you do, the richest and most powerful people in the world will act in perfect coordination to shut you down immediately. So to repeat, there is no social control going on here, none. And if you suggest otherwise, Twitter social controls will censor you. And not just Twitter's. Facebook has now decided it must, quote, build demand for vaccination in communities worldwide by sharing, quote, reassuring information about getting the vaccine. So Mark Zuckerberg was a tech tycoon. Now he's a professional marketer. Mark Zuckerberg's job is to make you want this vaccine like a cold beer on a hot day. Ask for it by name, wherever the better medicines are sold. Fortunately for Mark Zuckerberg, he gets to control the conversation about the product he's selling. Facebook has announced it will squelch, quote, any misinformation it sees about this vaccine. Other billionaires think that's a great idea. Do the social media companies, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, on and on, have a responsibility to do more? right now, Melinda, in terms of getting this misinformation, this disinformation off their platforms. And just to stop here real quick, this is Melinda Gates, Mrs. Bill Gates. They absolutely have a responsibility. The internet and the rise of social media has happened so quickly that really the regulations and the good policy making hasn't stayed out in front of it. And quite frankly, it needs to catch up. Now, wait a second. That looked like Melinda Gates, who seems like a nice enough person. But why is she weighing in on an international health emergency? Melinda Gates is not a doctor. She's not a research scientist. In fact, her last full-time job was 25 years ago in the marketing department at a software company. So why is she on CNN? And why is CNN asking her how this country should handle COVID? Well, simple. Melinda Gates is married to a billionaire. And in 2020, that's enough to give you control over an entire country. Melinda Gates is happy to take control. She wants control. And so she's demanding that the tech company censor anyone who contradicts the official storyline on the COVID vaccine. And she's getting her wish. None of this inspires confidence. Censorship will not convince a single person to take the coronavirus vaccine. In fact, it will have the opposite effect. Let's say you sincerely wanted to roll out a national vaccination campaign. The first thing you would need after the vaccine itself is social trust. People have to believe that the authorities know what they're doing. Otherwise, they won't participate. Censorship is the enemy of social trust. Once the population understands that you're holding back critical information, trust evaporates and people become suspicious. They start wondering, if the vaccine is as safe and effective as you claim it is, why do you have to lie about it? Why are you threatening us if we don't take it? So censorship doesn't work. If you want people to take your vaccine, they must trust your vaccine. And if you want them to trust it, you have to let them speak freely about it. That is obvious, it has always been true, but authorities have long been slow to grasp it. Smallpox was the first contagious disease controlled by a vaccine. Smallpox was a horrible disease, and for many hundreds of years, people were afraid of it. But they were also afraid of the vaccine. Like most vaccines, it could have significant side effects, including death. In the end, the smallpox vaccine turned out to be well worth it. It saved far more people than it hurt. But government officials couldn't be bothered to patiently explain that. 
So instead, they used force. Sound familiar? Several American states made the smallpox vaccine mandatory. In 1853, the British government did the same thing. The rules were simple. Take the vaccine and shut up. Well, a man called George Bamford was not on board. He refused. He didn't want his kids taking the smallpox vaccine, and he had good reason for that. The smallpox vaccine had already killed one of his other children. So it went to court, but the courts didn't care. They offered Bamford a choice, pay a steep fine or go to prison. So what was the effect of this? Everyone was watching. Inevitably, many people took George Bamford's side. In the United States and Great Britain, national anti-vaccination leagues formed. Tens of thousands of demonstrators took to the streets to protest. People like Frederick Douglass supported them. Eventually, the British government ended its forced vaccination policy. The lesson, if you want people to get vaccinated, you need to convince them to get vaccinated, and you must do it with reason. Lying and force do not work. Okay. Now, I play that, and I agree with what Tucker said. I am not anti-vaccine when it comes to COVID-19. I encourage you to get it if you want to get it, just like I do with masks. I encourage you to wear them if you want to wear them. If you don't, I am fine with that. Now, staying with Tucker Carlson, of course, he's had a great amount of fun making sport of Dr. Jill Biden, the woman who the mainstream media says is about to become the first lady. The advertiser is Butcher Box. Now, they're still advertising on Fox News, but they pulled their ads from Tucker Carlson tonight. Why? Well, because Tucker, well, did this. I have read Dr. Jill Biden is not a healer. She's not allowed to write prescriptions. She wouldn't know what to do with your appendix. Dr. Jill has an education degree from some school in Delaware, and you're supposed to find that highly impressive. She could be a Surgeon General. Now, many have laughed at the apparent absurdity of this, but we took it seriously because that's our job. We actually read her dissertation this week, the very document that made her, quote, a doctor. And what did we discover when we did that? We're going to give it to you in a diagnosis. Dr. Jill needs reading glasses. Either that or she's borderline illiterate. There are typos everywhere, including in the first graph of the introduction. Dr. Jill can't write. And she can't really think clearly either. Parts of the dissertation seem to be written in a foreign language using English words. They're essentially pure nonsense, like pig Latin or dogs barking. The whole thing is just incredibly embarrassing. And not simply to poor illiterate Jill Biden, but to the college that considered this crap scholarship. Embarrassing, in fact, to our entire system of higher education, to the nation itself. Jill Biden's doctoral dissertation is our national shame. Are we overstating this? Will you decide? On the very first page of Dr. Biden's opus, she describes an average class of students at a community college called Delaware Tech. Of course, she counts the students by their skin color. She's a Biden, after all. But pay close attention to the math. Quote, three quarters of the class will be Caucasian. One quarter of the class will be African-American. One seat will hold a Latino. And the remaining seats will be filled with students of Asian descent or non-resident aliens. In other words, somehow Dr. Biden accounted for all five quarters of the class, which actually isn't easy. You've got to pay very close attention to do something like that. As the dissertation continues, so does Dr. Jill's habit of counting things in non-traditional ways. On page 47, for example, she writes this, quote, of the 159 students surveyed, 55 received financial aid, 41 pay their own tuition bills, 45 students parents pay, three spouses pay, nine receive scholarships, and nine others receive funds for the GI Bill, vocational rehabilitation programs, or grant. Now we said that fast, but did you follow the accounting there? Jill Biden surveyed 159 students, but she received a total of 162 responses. So go ahead and try that at home. You can't. You're not a doctor. And it goes on. At one point, Dr. Jill suggests, and this is innovative, that, quote, the administration may want to consider in future planning an eight-week study week. An eight-week week. Bet you no one in the administration had thought of that before. In their tired, Western, linear approach to time and space, there was only a single week in a week. Yet another relic of the patriarchy. But once Jill Biden smashed the glass ceiling that shielded community <laughs> colleges in Delaware from new progressive approaches to time management, a week could have eight full weeks. As Jill Biden herself might say, that's an 8,000% increase. Not bad. 
Now, that's what got Tucker in trouble, saying that Joe Biden was basically illiterate. I had a chance to look at this thesis, opus, whatever the hell it is. Now, I am not a smart man. I think I prove that every day on this program. This was embarrassing. I expected more. It was utterly embarrassing if this writing is what got Dr. Jill Biden on the list to be called Dr. Jill. I mean, Tucker didn't give it to her enough. It was completely, utterly embarrassing. And good for Tucker for sticking to his guns and calling her out over this. Because can you imagine if Melania Trump, who, by the way, speaks, I don't know how many languages, and you remember that video from years ago of Joe Biden talking about how high his IQ was? I suspect her IQ is a little higher than Jill Biden's. She doesn't have a doctor or doesn't put doctor before her name or insist that she's called doctor. But anyway, just imagine a world where Melania Trump. Okay, speaking of completely embarrassing, I give you Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who cranked out this piece of Christmas propaganda and pandemic pornography. It's a Zoom call with her, a bunch of Michigan kids, and Santa Claus. Please get your barf bags ready. Thank you for joining us. I'm Governor Gretchen Whitmer, and I'm really excited to be here with all of you. And I also know someone who's been really following the rules and making sure that he stays safe and the elves stay safe. And so my special guest is Santa Claus. Hello, boys and girls. How are you? Does anyone have a question for Santa Claus? Santa, do you have to wear a mask? When I'm in my workshop with all my elves, we all are masked up in social distancing. Okay. I said, I said, I can't you read out the cookies and elf books and carrots for the reindeer this year? Yes, please do. Set out carrots and cookies if you can. I love the ultimate hand sanitizer and cure that with the cookies and milk. That was a good suggestion. Excuse me, Santa. Is yeah. it- Everyone has been testing negative. We're still getting tested. I think we're so far up north that it might not be getting to us, but we're not going to take any chances. We're all going to mask up. We're all going to wash our hands, and we're all going to stay six feet apart. Hi, how can we keep people safe for Christmas? What I would suggest to do is what the governor is telling all the people of the great state of Michigan to do. Social distance, wash your hands, and make sure you wear your mask when you're outside your home. And another way to stay safe during the holiday is to stay home, but call your grandparents and your cousins and your family and It's the safest way to tell the people you love how much you care about them. This year, it has to look a little bit different so we can stay safe. And I appreciate all of you doing your part. Santa, thank you so much for making time for us today. Let's hear your best. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Bye, everybody. Good Lord. Ken... You imagine, talk about propaganda. I mean, as bad as Janet Mills, that is, talk about indoctrination and child abuse. What kind of parent allows their children to be used as a pawn for this? And Santa Claus, what the hell are you thinking here, Santa Claus? Santa, you got to be better than that, dude. Santa's, um, well, I'm not going to get into Santa here that much because, well, it's Santa. But, um, you know, the little children you know who are um, listening now, you know, Santa is still going to bring you all your toys. And, 
listen to me. All right. Speaking of morons, let's go to CNN, where Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo were on TV last night. They were talking about New Jersey Governor, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, and Lemon calling out Chris Cuomo for doing a great job of what he said was rehabbing Chris Christie's reputation on the coronavirus and mask wearing. Of course, Christie got the COVID and he's on a rehab or a reputation rehab tour right now. Anyway, here's more from Lemon and Cuomo. So we're friends because we're always honest with each other, right? Oh, we are. This is a setup. Ah, no, I'm not setting you up. I'm not setting you up. I was just here to say, what do you mean this is a setup? You think you know me, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. What am I going to tell you? I don't know. I'm not a mind reader. I'm, I'm mindless. Gonna, reader. I was just going to say, Chris Christie's doing a great job of uh, rehabbing his reputation. He's on reputation rehab right now. And that's what he's doing. I didn't believe a word of what he said to you. You don't think he wants you to wear a mask? Um, he doesn't. He says he says when he says he wants you to wear a mask, what he said before is that you do that. Some people do that if you want to. That's what that's the caveat within there. And then when it happened to him, all of a sudden he's now maybe you should wear a mask. I, well, he's not. Maybe you should wear a mask. He's like, you got to wear a mask. Jordan. He's got you got to wear. He's a mask. not. Maybe you should wear a mask. Uh, but I hear you. Uh, yeah. I hear you. Before he was like, well, I think the country should open back up. We should do it with masks and gloves. But you can you know, th that is your own opinion about whether you do it or not. No, it's not. Not you should wear a mask. It should be mandated to wear a mask. But it's not the science. I know it should be. And that's that's the point. That's what he should be saying. And he should be saying instead of, well, I have a friendship with this person and I stand by them. Well, Sunday that's is, different. That, that's different. But that, but that's wrong. That I does, agree. That does not excuse his behavior because what he's doing instead of saying you shouldn't drive. I'm taking away the keys. Right. He's getting he got into the car with the president. He went into the friend that meeting thing. With him. The friend thing doesn't work for me the same way, but that's what the audience decides. Uh, yeah. The mask thing does work for me and we'll disagree. I don't believe in a mask mandate um, in terms of a universal one for 100 days or any amount of days, except when the context warrants that all places have to be treated equally. Um, meaning right now, if you have case explosions all over the place, OK, you can mandate it. You know, you can say everybody's got to wear a mask. Here's why. But you can't just leave it up to people because they're not doing the right thing. We have less than 50 percent compliance. The mistake was talking about a mandate when a lot of places didn't have community spread and it allowed. Like where? Well, I mean, there were lots of time in this country up until about two and a half months ago where different portions of the country were doing. It's uh, moments like this when I'm really happy that I don't have cable TV, not that I would watch CNN. I never think I'd be tempted to, but with these two chuckleheads on television, wow. And I'm no fan of Chris Christie either, but geez. That's a wrap with Ken Altshuler's coming up after the top of the hour. Dean Scontras, Contact Sports at 738. We go all sports at 808 with Travis Lasargent, columnist, sports writer from the Morning Sentinel and KJ. It's 655. Happy Thank Food. It's Friday, Friday, and Merry Christmas. I'm Mike Pilot. This is the Mike Pilot Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. ABC Entertainment News. It's Chadwick Boseman's final role. I'm going to get me a band and make me some records. In Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, he plays a 1920s blues trumpeter opposite Viola Davis, who says when they were filming the movie, she had no idea he was sick with cancer. There was nothing about Chadwick's life that made you think that he was dying. And he lived in a way that many people don't. He, he, he harnessed every single moment. There's Oscar buzz for both Boseman and Davis's performance. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is on Netflix today. Also out today, the docuseries On Point follows students at New York's School of American Ballet as they try to perfect a performance of The Nutcracker. That's on Disney+. Plus. The man who played Boba Fett in the original Star Wars trilogy has died. British actor Jeremy Bullock also starred in dozens of British TV shows. He died of health complications at the age of 75. I had a dream. And hopefully multiple Grammy winner Billie Eilish got everything she wanted today. It's her birthday. She's 19. Jason Athenson, ABC News, Hollywood. 
At Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, they understand that when faced with difficult and challenging times, it's a comfort to know that we'll get through this together. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union is committed to keeping not only their members safe, but also their dedicated employees. They're following CDC guidelines, protocols, and social distancing at all of their facilities. They may have changed some of their usual ways of doing business, but they haven't changed how they treat their members. Their safest services are available through drive-up, ATM, telephone, easy banking, mobile banking, by phone, or appointment. Lobbies are currently open in the Skowhegan and Farmington branches, and with the holidays just around the corner, Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union has a reason to brighten your season with their holiday loan special going on now through December 31st. Just ask any of their friendly and knowledgeable loan officers in Skowhegan, Farmington, Madison, Kingfield, or Stratton for complete details or online at f-sfcu.com. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, where their most important member is you. Member NCUA. The holidays may be here, but many of us still have work to do. And a Coyote tractor from Whittemore & Sons can move that big pile of snow, transport that wood, and take care of all your other heavy-duty winter jobs in no time. Coyote tractors are some of the toughest, most powerful, fuel-efficient, technologically advanced tractors ever built. With all their uses, a Coyote tractor is the gift that keeps on giving all year long. Even Santa has a tractor on his wish list this year. Check out the full line of tough and versatile compact tractors, attachments, implements, and accessories at Whittemore & Sons, your Coyote tractor dealer, with dependable sales and service for over 50 years. If you have questions or want to schedule a pickup, just call us at 207 207- 474-2591. Run ahead of the pack with a Coyote tractor from Whittemore and Sons on the Waterville Road in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family who cares. Whittemore and Sons Outdoor Power Equipment Hope to hold up. The year is ending already and we're way behind. We've got to do something fast so we won't hit our year-end goal. So this month we're slaying prices. Don't wait for the jolly old elf because right now, Santa Joey at Colebrook Mitsubishi will give you 4000 minimum for your old sled. Drive away in a brand new 2020 Mitsubishi Mirage with no money down for 179 a month. Or choose a new 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross or Mitsubishi Outlander Sport with no money down for $299 a month. Choose our top-of-the-line model, the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander with room for seven with no money down for only $320 a month. These are purchases, not leases. That's a brand new vehicle with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited power train warranty with no down payment are other dealers roasting your chestnuts over past credit mishaps let us help you beat the holiday blues and drive home a new mitsubishi today come visit us at colbrook mitsubishi route 201 in skowhegan or visit us online at colbrookmitsubishi.com from the home auto group studios farmington ford and franklin chrysler in farmington this is wskw skowhegan augusta waterville legacy 1160 
purple mountain Ten majesties Oh, oh, the fruited plain Well, now, wait a minute I'm talking about America Sweet America You know, God done shed his grace on thee He gave me crown that good Yes, he did Heavy brotherhood From sea to shine and see You know, I wish I had somebody to come to say this America I love you, America You see, my God, he done shed his grace on thee you are loving for it, cause he, 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 he crowned that good. He told me he would, every brotherhood, from sea to shine and see. Oh, Lord. I thank you, Lord. News. I'm Tom Rivers. This morning, Vice President Mike Pence and Second Lady Karen Pence will receive COVID-19 vaccines, along with Surgeon General Jerome Adams. But as the vaccine continues to roll out, the governor of Washington, Jay Inslee, said his state is now being told it's getting fewer doses than expected. The only thing you can be sure of when you have a massive logistical efforts like this, you probably could expect some glitches. This may be the first one. We'd love it to be the last one. The FDA could authorize a second vaccine for use as soon as today after an advisory panel gave its recommendation for the vaccine made by Moderna. There's still no deal in Congress over a new economic relief package. The proposed bill would cost around $900 billion. President-elect Biden's latest cabinet nominees include more history, his pick for Interior Secretary, Congresswoman Deb Holland, would be the first Native American to serve in a presidential cabinet. This is ABC News. Detroit mourning the death of a leading lawman due to the coronavirus. Benny Napoleon, the popular, larger-than-life, charismatic Wayne County Sheriff, had been a fixture in the city seemingly forever, starting out with the police department nearly 50 years ago at 18. Not only was he a professional, uh, and he really did his job, but uh, more importantly, he had a very big heart and a soft side. Former County Sheriff Robert Fricano says Napoleon was a son of the city who gave back especially to young people. County Commission Chair Alicia Bell. And Napoleon was so much to so many people, beloved by so many people, and he will thoroughly be missed. He had been in the hospital for three weeks on a ventilator fighting COVID-19. Benny Napoleon was 65. Derek Dennis, ABC News. Satellite photos obtained by the AP appear to show Iran starting up construction at its underground nuclear facility. It's not clear what kind of work is being done, but this comes after an explosion at another Iranian nuclear site. I'm Tom Rivers, ABC News. I worry about lots of things. My finances, my grandkids. If you're 65 or older, you have enough things to worry about. Pneumococcal pneumonia shouldn't be one of them. Even healthy adults 65 and older are at increased risk for this potentially serious bacterial lung disease that can disrupt your life for weeks. Help protect yourself with the Prevnar 13 pneumococcal 13 valent conjugate vaccine, diphtheria CRM197 protein. Prevnar 13 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 13 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Prevnar 13 does not protect against all strains of the disease. Don't get Prevnar 13 if you have had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with a weakened immune system may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most commonly reported side effect was pain at the injection site. For additional common side effects and full prescribing information, please call 1-866-694-9300 or visit Prevnar13.com. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 13. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Crisos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. This morning, we're learning that Maine will get 40% fewer doses of Pfizer vaccine in next week's shipment. Operation Warp Speed told the CDC it'll get 8,700 doses instead of 13,600. 
A main CDC spokesperson said Operation Warp Speed did not provide an explanation for the reduction, but it means the state won't have enough doses to vaccinate residents and staff at all long-term care facilities in Maine. The head of the FDA, meanwhile, says his agency will move quickly to authorize the second COVID-19 vaccine to fight the pandemic. He says regulators have spoken with Moderna, which co-developed the vaccine with the National Institutes of Health. This comes after a panel of FDA advisors ruled that the benefits of the vaccine outweighed the risks for those 18 years and older. In sports, all players on the UMaine men's ice hockey team are quarantining. University officials have announced a positive case through antigen testing. All team activities have been halted. Coaches and staff were not considered close contacts. The women's team will still head to Providence this weekend for two games against the Friars. Meanwhile, the UMaine men's basketball team is set to tip off its season this Saturday and Sunday down in Hartford. The Black Bears have yet to play a game this season due to COVID concerns. And in the NFL, the Los Angeles Chargers beat the Las Vegas Raiders 30-27 to last night. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. If you've checked the gift list twice and it's got something different for everyone on it, just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassalboro Town Line. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Are you worried about spending too much? Townline Antiques is here to help you with that too. Because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 40, some even 50% off their selection. There's always new, cool, and unique gift ideas, including collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and much more. Of course, the problem is, you not only find lots of great gift ideas, you'll come across things that you may want to take home for yourself. But with their December sale of up to 50% off, you can take them all home for less. So don't miss out on this santa size sale with savings up to 50% off this December. It's Online Antiques, open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 5. Route 201, right on the Winslow Vassalboro town line. Interested in cutting your fuel oil bills by as much as 40%? Then call your Energy Kinetic System 2000 premier dealer. Cools, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. And ask about the System 2000. You can save up to 40% off your heating costs and have all the hot water you need with the System 2000 from Energy Kinetics. Whether you're planning on replacing your current boiler or building a new home, stop into the Cool showroom at 19 North Street in Waterville and see the System 2000 from Energy Kinetics. The System 2000 runs on oil or propane, can be converted between fuels with a simple burner change, is whisper quiet, and can save you up to 40% off your heating fuel cost. If you own an older boiler, help keep it running more efficiently with a cleaning and tune-up. And don't forget, when you need emergency service, call Hool's 24-hour service department at 872-6762. Hool's Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, your System 2000 premier dealer. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor some clouds to start this morning, then becoming mostly sunny. Still cool today with highs in the mid to upper 20s. Partly sunny tomorrow, highs in the low 30s. Cloudy mid 30s on Sunday with a chance for a scattered rain or snow shower in the afternoon and evening. Highs near 40 for the start of next week. Yeah, it's cool all right right now. Clear skies, a cool 12 in Skowhegan, 13 in Waterville, and an even cooler 11 in Augusta. And you're up to date from Legacy 1160 WSKW. You think it? He says it. Yada, yada, yada. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Good morning, 710. Mike Violet Show in progress. Legacy 1160 WSKW. Maine's Heritage Station, six hours of live local talk. Actually, today, seven hours of live local talk. And I'll tell you why. First of all, after my show today, it's the John James Freedom Pep Rally. That's every day from 9 until noon, the seventh hour of live local talk every Friday. Conserving the Maine Outdoors, David Trahan and Mike Shaw, your host, brought to you by the Sportsman's Alliance of Maine. Every Friday, of course, it is a thank Buddha. It's Friday, and that means we welcome in. That's a wrap with Ken Altshuler, the man who coined the phrase, thank Buddha, it's Friday. Here is Ken Altshuler. Ken, good morning. Good morning, Michael, and may I take this opportunity to personally and very emphatically thank the Buddha for bringing me to this particular Friday. And you just did, my friend. Thank you very much for doing that. So the question on the minds of all listeners right now, myself included, let's continue with the snowblower chronicles of Ken Altshuler. When last we left you, you were going to go out on Wednesday and see if the snowblower pre-storm started so my question to you 
And I very simply want a yes or a no answer, Ken. Did your snowblower start? Yes, it did. And it went, and and so you were able to clear snow. Well, so here's 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 the thing. There's this little uh, this little switch that you put on or off. Yeah. And I had it on off instead of on, so I had it on stop instead of run. And I thought I had it on run, but it was on off from last year, and I didn't turn it back on on. So when I realized that you have to turn it to on for it to run. Miraculously, it started. It ran. It did. And I, I, I only pumped the primer. Now that I know the term of it, three times. Right. And I did put the choke on because it said to put the choke on. Yep. And you know, it chugged a little bit. Now I will say, there's a lot of smoke that came out of the. Is that a carburetor? Is that right? Uh, sure. <laughs> Whatever. A lot, a lot of smoke came out. But as then, we as we like to say to- here, close enough for AM radio. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so so it got going and then I I put I took it off choke and put it on run and it purred like a little baby. <laughs> no, it yeah. purrs like a kitten can, not yeah, a I'm little sorry. baby. It cries like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> has a has a bottom like a, a baby's bottom, right? Like a baby's well, bottom. Well the snow <laughs> was as soft as a baby's bottom, that's for sure. This was the light powdery stuff, so Well, that may be, my friend. I don't know how much snow you got. But I got a ton of snow. Well, give I mean, us, uh, got, are you taking an official measurement there at the Doyle Alt Schooler compound? No, but I'm eyeballing it. And I think, <laughs> I know they said uh, Portland got 17 inches. We right. got, I got 18 inches up well, there, at least. And we can count on your eyeballs to be absolutely <laughs> exact. Look, I, I looked at the grill, which is on my deck, and I looked at how much snow was on the grill. And it looked like 18 inches to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I absolutely. And the snowblower. The snowblower, you, you know, I, it cut through it like a knife. Yeah. And I and I went I went and snow, snow blew half of it. No, I snow blew the whole thing halfway be, be, uh, the, the, in the middle of the storm. Yeah. And then when it was over, I went and did it again. And you I cleaned up. Problem. Yeah. See, that's yeah. the thing with snow blowing. It's addictive, man. You, you get out there and you. You, you, your driveway gets wider every snowstorm. Your walkways get wider every snowstorm. The, uh, <laughs> well, as... I also I also forgot I have a smaller snowblower. What? That I bought. What? A Wait a minute. Ago. You have two <laughs> snowblowers? <laughs> I do. <laughs> and the, sm- the smaller one, which I forgot all about because it's somewhere in the basement, um, I, I can I can lift it so I can put it on the deck because there's no way to get my big snowblower right. on the deck. Because I'm thinking, uh, and so Linda's out there uh, shoveling on the back deck, and she's almost done. I said, you know, I think I have a snowblower <laughs> to do that deck, and so I'm going to bring that out. Uh, I'm going to bring that out this weekend now and see if it works. The question is: Is that also a uh, 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 a combustion engine? Is that a gas powered engine or is it electric? No, 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 I wouldn't do an electric snow. How do you do an electric snow? Well, I had a, I like had one for years. I had a little Toro electric walkway snowblower that you plugged in. Obviously, I used that for my decks and walkways, and for the for the poop way for the beagle for Hope the famous beagle. Um, I used that for the poop way and those kinds of things, and then of course I used my big one for the driveway and all that stuff. No, if I have an electric snowblower, that that cord's going to be caught up in that you're, snowblower. You're going to mangle it all to hell, right? There's no, there's no way I'm surviving that one. No. No, this is gas stop, but I don't know that two cycle, or do they have two and four cycle Yeah, but this is, these are four cycle, uh, you know, I call them lawnmower engines for lack yeah. of it. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's yeah, a, I don't know, but I'll, it's I'll a I'll Tecumseh it or a Briggs and Stratton or something like that. So, yeah, I don't even know what make and model. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, this is, these are positive strides, Ken. And I want to thank you, Mike, because not everybody, off, in fact, nobody but you, <laughs> offered to come to my house and help me start the snowblower if I couldn't get it going. So even my son-in-law <laughs> didn't offer to do that. Well, you, nothing, nothing against Thurston Howell the Third, but you're better off asking Linda for small <laughs> engine instruction <laughs> than him, That's, right? Well, no, he's kind of a handyman. He, he you know, he's kind of he's he's actually a a handyman. He can no, do I, stuff. I knew he, I know Preston grew up on, on a farm, but right. he doesn't exactly give off the vibe of, yeah, I can get my hands dirty and fix a four cylinder engine. 
No, he does. He wears polo shirts, so I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, he's, he's very preppy. Yeah, he, yeah, he is. So, but but you did offer to come up and uh, good. I'm, and I would have loved to have you come up and yeah. have a cup of coffee and stuff. Sure, that would have been any time. We we tried a new uh, 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 driveway tower this year. We'll see how that goes. Now wait a minute. Now wait just a cotton picking minute. You have yeah. a snow. You're not snow blowing the driveway. My with- driveway's. 80 feet long at a 45 degree angle. No, I know. I'm not doing that. I get tired just walking down it. My God, the, the yeah, it, is, know, it is it is you know, not let easy. Teach you a le- let me teach you a lesson, young man. Let me tell you something, and you're going to find this out. Your physical abilities radically change after you turn 60. <laughs> I and guess what you could do when you were 59. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden. You can't do it when you're 60. Right. So, so yeah. You... No, I get a snowblower. Yeah, and, and the guy has to remember, we're on a private road, so he has to plow the road, too. Wow. I mean, the modern problems of Ken Altshuler. Did you think about this when you and Linda were designing this glorious house, by the way, which is you have a magnificent house. You always Thank have you. a magnificent house. Your house in Durham was magnificent, too. Thank but you. but but Thank you. You, you do have a wicked long, high, steep driveway. There's no question about that. Um. When you bought that mountain there in Freeport, did you think of, hmm, in December, when it begins to snow, we're going to need several snow removal devices for this place? Yeah, so first of all, let's make sure we understand this. We had nothing to do with this. Linda did this. I was content <laughs> right. in Durham. Yes, dear. Durham I house. know. I would never have moved. And even when Linda was building this house, I really didn't believe we were going to ever move <laughs> I to know. it. I remember. So, so Linda, I don't know if Linda said, hmm, because Linda knows that I'm in charge of the outside. She's in charge of the inside. So I don't think she really cares, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think she figured, you know, make a man out of it, you know? Well, well it had to happen eventually, to right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, no, we did not think this out well. And, in fact, we have friends who said we should have put an elevator in our house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never yeah. done. Well, the stairs are good for you, though. You know, I mean, it, 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 I know we're all getting old, but still being able to go up the stairs is good. I mean, well, here's what I maybe think. a freight like, elevator, you know, for for cargo. If it gets to the point where I need an elevator, yeah, I have all day to, cl- to crawl up the stairs. So yeah. why do I need an elevator? I'll just crawl up the stairs. Good exercise. Okay, so the Snowblower Chronicles, uh, it's a yep. happy ending today, and yep. that's good. So you're making progress. Eventually, yep. you're going to become a man. You know what I mean, Ken? Eventually, I am. I am. Uh, I eventually, am. I'm, your I'm, balls I'm, yeah. are going to drop, and we're going to crown you a man. Yeah. So, you, listen, were you, did you stay in Portland last night? No, um, I've been up with the king up in uh, beautiful Winslow. So you have no idea if you're going to be able to get into your abode. Uh, I, I assume uh, by the time I go there that uh, today that uh, it'll be somewhat uh, plowed out and shoveled out. And, you know, I'm not worried about it. it the, the great thing about this is it's not my responsibility. Yeah, but then you still got to find a parking place. Uh, yeah, but the parking ban was is now uh, or was overnight. So okay. I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. I'm and, worried about you. Yeah. No, well, so thanks, listen. man. I appreciate it. So, listen, more serious stuff. What are, you, uh, what are your thoughts on Joe Biden's uh, cabinet pick so far? Um, he picked an Indian, right, to be the Secretary of Interior. Can I say that? Yeah, I love that. But can, Native can, American. An indigenous Indian. person. Yes, he picked an indigenous person to... I think uh, that was a great pick. Was she, was she a Pueblo or Navajo? I forget. Uh, I, I don't Whatever. know. I don't yep. care. She's a Native American. Yep. Uh, uh, sure. I mean, I, I, I apparently they have like a quota list. It's not the most qualified. We need to pick... Uh, all I can He's think of, very when, qualified. remember, uh, very J- qualified. remember James Watt, who was the Secretary of Interior for Reagan, yeah, um, saying disaster. saying we had a black and a Jew, and a <laughs> well, that's that reminds me <laughs> of the. What do you Bi- think of, of Buttigieg being the transportation? Secretary? And I love what does fi- Peter? What does Peter think about that? Well, I did a bit on that yesterday because I think my Peter, my son Peter is more qualified to be transportation secretary than Peter Buttigieg because you see my son's actually a civil engineer whose specialty is designing rail and mass transit um, train systems and rail systems. Pete Buttigieg literally said that he loved riding trains and that he proposed to his husband at O'Hare Airport, which apparently 
was enough for Joe Biden to hire him to be the secretary of transportation. <laughs> of course. I, I question that pick, I will say. Uh, but but where else are you going to put him? Well, I mean, uh, he you, had to throw him a bone because uh, he dropped out. Have you seen the designated out? survivor TV show? No, I have not. Remember, there's some uh, cabinet positions that are so insignificant <laughs> that they don't care if you live or die. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know? No. I mean, I don't know how you mess up being the Secretary of Transportation, to be perfectly honest with you, but um, I'm well, not... You, you, know, you, you put on a, you put on an engineer hat and pretend that you're in a train yeah, running around you your say, office. You say choo-choo all the time. I, I, I get it. I mean, obviously, our, you know, I think Biden said the other day, our, some world organization rated our transportation and infrastructure as 10th worst or 10th best uh, in the world, which is actually better than I thought. Because I had us way down the list. So, but I, I'm not exactly expecting the road suddenly in the state of Maine to get better. Are you? No. But, no. you know, somebody suggested Buttigieg should have been Secretary of Defense. <laughs> well, he he he, he is a, a you know, veteran. He did go to Afghanistan. I, I mean, don't care. Yeah, yeah. You can't be the Secretary of Defense if you're like, you know, 22 years old. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You gotta have some experience. You gotta be older. Than, I don't. I want somebody older to run the secretary to be the secretary of defense. For God's sake! Look, you got a gay guy as the transportation secretary, and you got an Indian as the interiors. Uh, this is the way this is going to go. It's all about having a rainbow coalition, and it's not I about having have my the, next question. What? How, what do you think about the fact that he's not put really any progressives in the cabinet? Not really any progressives. Yeah, when you say uh, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, the more progressives, uh, AOC. I mean, she, he has not put any progressives really in Ken, the cabinet. Ken, to be honest, uh, are you going to give a? It, it's bad enough that AOC is a congresswoman. Are you going to give her a cabinet position? That dope. Would I? No. Yeah. But Even I, Biden's but not, not silly Biden. enough to do that now. Uh, Granny Warren and and, uh, and Bernie, um, you know, they probably have more power, and I think that's important to them as sitting U.S. senators. You'd think, though, that Bernie Sanders, who's got to be closing in on 80 years old, maybe a cabinet position of, I don't know, energy or something like that would be something that would be appealing to him. But I, 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 just, I think in Warren's case, she's giving up, uh, she would be giving up a, a real nice soapbox as senator in Massachusetts, to, to take a position there. Yeah, I agree. And, and I know that, uh, uh, as you mentioned, a Republican governor in Massachusetts is really a Democrat. But you do run the risk of the governor appointing somebody uh, who would not be square in the Democratic circles if uh, Elizabeth Warren was appointed. That wouldn't happen in Vermont. It would be a problem. But you've got to be careful appointing uh, Democratic senators to cabinet positions with the um, you know, with the Senate power in, in the balance. Yeah. So uh, what's on the docket for this weekend? Anything planned with the family or any Christmas mm -hmm. stuff going on? Well, I do have to get one more Christmas present. Uh, oh, yeah? I'm going to do that through Amazon because I don't believe in going out of the house. I did go to Beans, by the way, last week. You went to L.L. Bean? I did. What did we you buy, a rucksack? <laughs> no, we bought a, a throw. Uh, a throw for my sister-in-law in New Jersey. Okay. A bean throw right. blanket, you know. Uh, but, it's, but, you know, I will say that it was very nice. It wasn't very crowded. And uh, I got some peanut brittle while I was there. Nice. Which was nice. Yeah. Would you, and every, uh, so, everybody so, was all masked up? Uh, everybody was masked up. There was uh, People were socially distancing, and it was very nice. So that was good. So uh, I'm pretty much done with Christmas. I pretty much do all that online because it's much so much easier, and, and you know, if I do that. But you know, it's really time for me to now that I brought all the lawn stuff into the basement. I think it's time for me to organize the basement and put everything where it belongs, so I Probably. can move around it. Probably. Well, you enjoy the weekend, Ken, and we will talk to you on Wednesday, my friend. Looking forward to it, my friend. Thank you for offering to come sort my my blower for. Anytime, as you always say, I'm here to serve. <laughs> Take care. See you Wednesday. Ken Altshuler, the Snowblower Chronicles, a happy ending this morning. All right, Dean Scotras, we had a text exchange yesterday. He's on fire. We're going to talk about black coaches in the NFL, a column written by Jason Whitlock of Outkick.com. We're going to talk about Joe Biden.
We're going to talk about Dr. Jill Biden. It's all coming up. Contact Sports is next. I'm Mike Weiler on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Nothing gives you more comfort and security during a power outage than a wood stove regency. So visit Somerset Stone and Stove. Installing an efficient Regency wood stove will keep your family warm during those bone chilling nights. And if you need it, Somerset Stone also offers professional delivery, installation, and financing options on all Regency stoves. Stop by Somerset Stone and Stove and save on your Regency wood stove at 1078 Kennedy Memorial Drive in Oakland. Online at somersetstoneandstove.com. Hi, I'm Teresa Smith, Director of Advising at Kennebec Valley Community College. For the past 25 years, it has been my privilege to help people just like you reach your educational goals. Whether you're a high school student just getting started, a parent who's always had to put your family first, or a worker looking for new skills, KVCC has something for you. And trust me, it's never too late to get started. Give me a call at 453-KVCC, and together, let's see what we can do. If you've checked that gift list twice, and it's got something different for everyone on it, just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassaboro Townline. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Wait, are you worried about spending too much? Townline Antiques is here to help with that too, because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 40, some are even 50% off their entire selection. And there's always new, cool, and unique gift ideas, including collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and so much more. Of course, the problem is, I not only find lots of great gift ideas, I always come across things I want too. But with their December sale of up to 50% off store-wide, we can take them all home for less. So don't miss out on this Santa-sized sale with savings of up to 50% off this December at Townline Antique Center, open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 5, Route 201, right on the Winslow Valley. Castleboro Town Line. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go, take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show, take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust, and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. M O O D Y. Your kid was talking on the cell phone, drove right through your own home, sitting in the parking lot. Maybe you get hit a lot, driving through the green light. Suddenly your side swipe, put it in reverse, but it turned out that it was first. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Crisos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. This morning, we're learning that Maine will get 40% fewer doses of Pfizer vaccine in next week's shipment. Operation Warp Speed told the CDC it'll get 8,700 doses instead of 13,600. A Maine CDC spokesperson said Operation Warp Speed did not provide an explanation for the reduction, but it means the state won't have enough doses to vaccinate residents and staff at all long-term care facilities in Maine. The head of the FDA, meanwhile, says his agency will move quickly to authorize the second COVID-19 vaccine to fight the pandemic. He says regulators have spoken with Moderna, which co-developed the vaccine with the National Institutes of Health. This comes after a panel of FDA advisors ruled that the benefits of the vaccine outweighed the risks for those 18 years and older. In sports, all players on the UMaine men's ice hockey team are quarantining. University officials have announced a positive case through antigen testing. All team activities have been halted. Coaches and staff were not considered close contacts. The women's team will still head to Providence this weekend for two games against the Friars. Meanwhile, the UMaine men's basketball team is set to tip off its season this Saturday and Sunday down in Hartford. The Black Bears have yet to play a game this season due to COVID concerns. And in the NFL, the Los Angeles Chargers beat the Las Vegas Raiders 30-27 to last night. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Season's greetings from the Shibley family and Bob's Cash Fuel. If quality and reliability for all of your home heating and cooling needs is important to you, then choose Bob's Cash Fuel in Madison. 
Starting out with just one truck for deliveries in 1981, they've continued to grow to a locally owned and operated full-service company offering experience and a staff of trusted and loyal professionals. Bob's Cash Fuel offers heating oil, kerosene, diesel, gasoline, propane, and 24-hour emergency service for heating and cooling. And now with their new app, you can order fuel right from your phone, check account information and delivery status, make a payment, and more. Download the app at the App Store today. Bob's Cash Fuel also offers emergency oil and propane propane delivery to all of their customers. Not sure what to get someone this holiday season? Give them a gift card that can be used for any product or service at Bob's Cash Fuel. To heat or cool and propane too, call Bob's Cash Fuel. Happy holidays from Bob's Cash Fuel, Route 148 in Madison, your System 2000 premier dealer. Hi, Seth Batty with Rockland Ford here. If you are in the market for a new SUV, the deals have never been better. I've seen 0% financing and I've seen massive rebates, but I've never seen 0% financing and massive rebates. Until the end of the year, you can get the best of both worlds. How would you like to own a brand new 2020 Ford Explorer for $6,000 off MSRP and 0% interest for only $4.99 a month with no money down. I repeat, you can own a brand new Ford Explorer for only $4.99 a month with no money down. Or how about a brand new Ford Escape for only $19,999 or $2.99 a month with no money down. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Own a brand new Ford Escape for only $19,999 or $2.99 a month with no money down. I've been in the business for quite some time now, and I've never seen deals better than this. Come on down to Rockland Ford off Route 1 in Thomaston or call us today. Deals are with qualified credit while supplies last, and customer must trade in a vehicle. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Some clouds to start this morning, then becoming mostly sunny. Still cool today with highs in the mid to upper 20s. Partly sunny tomorrow, highs in the low 30s. Cloudy mid 30s on Sunday with a chance for a scattered rain or snow shower in the afternoon and evening. Highs near 40 for the start of next week. Thank you, Lexi. We have sunshine. Still chilly, though. It's 12 in Skowhegan. 13 in Waterville. Sunshine and 13 degrees in Augusta as well. And you're up to date from Legacy 1160, WSKW. His mediocre high school academic achievements have prepared him nicely for a career in radio. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160, WSKW. Good morning. It's 734. Thank Buddha. It's Friday, Friday in progress. Friday, December 18th, 2020. I'm Mike Violet. Glad you're with me. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Hope you had a great Hanukkah if you celebrated. Show is brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting. 861-7028. Go online. Find them. KennebecElectric.com. We're online, too. Our Listen Live button located at Legacy1160.com. Brought to you by the Harry J. Smith Company. Want to watch the show? The excitement, the thrills of me talking on a stick? That's at Facebook.com slash Legacy1160WSKW or go to YouTube and just type in Legacy1160 and our feed there, audio and video, as always, is brought to you by Moody's Collision Centers. The autumn wind is a pirate blustering in from sea with a rollicking song he sweeps along swaggering voicelessly and with that sound we say good morning to our favorite greek pirate he of course is dean scontras good morning dino how are you good morning mike doing good we're still uh still digging out here yeah you had what uh three inches (laughs) yeah i think it was probably probably close to three so we're still (laughs) shut down here (laughs) they literally canceled the uh the the uh, virtual learning day right for your daughter Canceled uh, virtual learning uh, two days in a row. Two so I'm, days. I'm not sure if it's canceled today or not. Okay. Well, uh, you know, uh, tread lightly and go slow. Um, I'll be, <laughs> it's We are living in the stupidest times ever, and we could go on and on and on about sure. that. So we we have a bunch of things to get to. You actually have, have taken the bull by the horns, and you're now sending me topic suggestions, which I love. Yeah. And we're going to start out here with a great column by Jason Whitlock of Outkick. Uh, dot com, the Clay Travis, Jason Whitlock combination. And of course, Jason Whitlock is a black guy, uh, a big black guy who did play college football, by the way, at Ball State University for what it's worth. But he's got a column entitled The Black Matriarchy Plays Significant Role in the Plight of the Black College Football Coach. We've got a bunch of college football coaches and pro coaches, really. Derek Mason, Lovey Smith, 
Kevin Sumlin. We've got Anthony Lynn, who, although he won last night, is probably going to be fired as well, who are going to be dismissed. And the woke crowd, of course, is going to have their thoughts and opinions. And I think we can probably guess what they are. But he takes an in-depth look at the black coach, the plight of the black coach, or is it maybe the advantages given the black coach? Yeah, and the, the, the article is great, and it's um, it's good to see him, you know, bringing up these things. And you, you know, he's going to be chastised and ostracized and all that other stuff. But it brought that. I mean, it, it brought back a, a whole. I'm going to say memories, but a, a lot of other thoughts. One of which Matt Jacobson brought up on my Facebook, which I thought too, which is Daniel Patrick Moynihan talked about something similar and was chastised and and, and tarred feathers for that too. Um, I remember sitting in one of my my classes. Uh, when I went back to, you know, a liberal arts graduate degree program down here about school choice. And um, we had a researcher from Harvard after months and months of study um, in Baltimore say, you know, a a child's best chance of making it out of the inner city of Baltimore is a two-parent household. And I think Whitlock's whole argument is is a riff off the Moynihan argument, is a riff off the argument about what social scientists have been telling us for some long or some time is that the, the best way to get out of any disadvantaged situation is the love and care of, of, of two parents. And, mm-hmm. you know, some people will react to that different in, in different ways, right? There, there was the, uh, there was a Dan Quayle, you know, um, uh, sort of reaction back in the, what was that, the 80s, where you can't say that about single parent households, and you can't say that about uh, certain racial households, mm-hmm. but it, it, is, it is a truth that needs to be discussed, and it's not just Whitlock that brought it up, and he brings it up in the context of football, but in a year where we've been talking about, you know, insert whatever social justice issues you want, uh, it continues to be a problem that plagues America, not only white America, but black America as well, which is the breakdown of the family, single parent household, and wedlock, or birth out of wedlock as a source of, of, if you want to talk about any life mattering, the, the life that needs to matter the most is, uh, is the life of the child, and that means the father and the mother, and that's a commonsensical um, argument, and, um, and I, I can't believe that anybody should feel threatened for, for saying something publicly. And, and I think that was his point, is that the reason a lot of these white coaches have success is because they are more paternalistic to the, to the kids who come to those programs, and the kids that seek out Stanford, uh, Stanford on the other hand, are, are the type of kids that grew up in those sort of households. Yeah. Seems like a, a plausible argument to me. It certainly does. Well, um, in in a world where the left is basing or saying that they base it, you know, you can certainly argue with it. But in a world where they say that everything that they espouse is based on science and fact and such, there are, of course, many convenient facts and science that they choose to ignore. This is probably going to be one of them. It's it's, it's a big one. And you can even take this in the context context of, of school choice, where school choice uh, is, is largely very popular in inner city minority neighborhoods, and it's largely popular among single black mothers for a reason, because those single black mothers know that getting their child into a good school, uh, private or public, and having the choice to do so gives that child the best chance of success in the future. And that's why <laughs> I mean, the hypocrisy of the social science or not following the social science about it is the numbers are really compelling. In those areas, those kids would be better if they get a choice to go to school where they want to. And, and as you just said, that, that is cast aside. All the social science is put aside uh, because, you know, the teacher's union in the, in the democratic hierarchy is, is more important than the needs and wants of a, uh, of a single mother in Milwaukee. This is very true. Dean Scotchers with yep. us. It's Contact Sports. We do this every single Friday after the 7.30 news, and of course, we'll replay it for you or give you a chance to replay it or hear it for the first time yourself after the show. The podcast will be up, and you'll be able to find that on the Legacy Facebook page. And, you know, you know, just looking at the, the, you know, the coaching uh, angle of this um, from a a black and white perspective, um, the part about, uh, you know, a father, a two-parent family is obviously the whole point of the article, but I, 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 I do want to take a quick look at the black coaches um, who are um, who who get jobs um, and may not necessarily be able to keep them. But I look at like a Lovey Smith at Illinois. He he was a coach, of course, in the NFL um, in in uh, in Chicago. 
um, uh, d- you know, didn't have a tremendous amount of success there, has been at Illinois for a long time. It's almost like, though, um, that uh, is as crazy as it sounds that some black coaches actually get more time than they probably deserve because the university doesn't want to fire them and therefore be perceived as racist. Yeah, I, that, that's probably true. And, I, you know, we, we're having this conversation in the workforce as well, which is, you know, it yeah. gives um, people a chance. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't mean you abandon and don't give up the, the chance. And some people, you know, maybe it is good for society to give you know, people, you know, more chances or additional chances. I think that becomes a little bit trickier in sports as well. Because, you know, as well as I do, sometimes, you know, the cards you've been dealt or the cards you've been dealt, the people you got, the players you got, will determine your success. So I'm not opposed to anybody giving anybody, you know, multiple chances. And I do think some coaches walk into really good situations and then they trade up accordingly. And then you, you know, you're getting a situation where they've got to start up and recruit and start again. And you'll see that, you know, it's a, it's a little more difficult. Look at the plight of uh, New England's own Chip Kelly, right? His rise was, was pretty astronomical mm. to the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, and it's not been as good since, right? So, uh, you know, I think there's so many different dynamics that go into a coach's success. Um, you know, some coaches notwithstanding. I think, you know, the Belichick's of the world, you know, they're, they're going to, they're, well, I guess you could even say he had his, 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 uh, you know, troubles too. So I don't know. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's such a complex, um, profession and there's so many other codependencies on what determines a coach's success. I, I just like the way Whitlock approached it from, from bringing up a, an issue in a year that, uh, in a topic that needs to be talked about and that's not being talked about. Exactly. You can find that column, by the way, on their website, outkick.com. Jason Whitlock and Clay Travis, who have collaborated and are doing some great work. And also on that website is Gary Sheffield Jr., the son of the Major League Baseball player who does yeah. some, some great stuff as well. Let's segue over to the doctoral thesis of Dr. Jill Biden. Tucker Carlson has had some fun with it this week. I had a chance to read Mrs. Biden's thesis this week. I've seen, and I agree with Tucker, I have seen better commands of English in eight-year-olds than what I saw there. I, I was embarrassed to read it. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I read the article in the Wall Street Journal. I remember reading it and thinking, you know, it just kind of makes sense. And by the, the Associated Press own standards, they don't refer to anybody as doctor who is not either a medical doctor or a dentist, PT, right? Yeah. And, and so the, the uproar was 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 a little bit kind of curious, I guess. Um, but but you're right. I've seen the excerpts, and certainly, you know, um, if it were me, I would be embarrassed that my thesis made it to, uh, you know, into the public sphere, and I've been you know insisting that everybody call me doctor for the last ten years. <laughs> But if, if, if that is actually true, that the source of her, um, I guess, angst or her, the source of all of this was her desire to be known not as Mrs. or, or Senator Biden's wife, but as Dr. Biden. I mean, that, that, that tells you a little bit about the Bidens, as I wrote my, my rant earlier this week, is that, you know, their, their lust for power and leadership is not coming from, from a good place. <laughs> And I would, I would be certainly, you know, I think, as I said, the, the proper response is just to abandon it. Call, call me Jill, that's fine. And I think anybody who's ever met anybody of any title who insists on being called by that title, as you said, is, a, you know, that's, that's sort of, I guess, a secret for saying, uh, don't you know who I am? And that certainly seems to be what it is. It's just uh, it's social status climbing. Yes, uh, I, I I absolutely agree. Speaking of, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? All right, there's Mo Green right there. <laughs> okay. Um, here's my criteria for whether or not you should be called a doctor, comma, Dean. If we're on a plane and somebody is stricken with some sort of an illness and I, yeah. as a civilian, am attending to that person and can see that they are in distress, I turn to the aisle and shout, is there a doctor on the plane? <laughs> and if you answer it immediately, you are a doctor. Jill Biden is not going to answer because all she's going to do is provide you with bad grammar and bad punctuation. The patient is going to die. Yeah, and even the subject of her <laughs> thesis was a little bit light, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. wasn't it some, something about this? community colleges, but I, I agree entirely. And Nonsensical. Plus, you can't else, do math either, for God's sakes. 
somebody else posted another good point is that, you know, for, for years, I mean, the doctor Ben Carson, who yeah. was a brain neurosurgeon surgeon. Yeah. operating on the brains of, of children. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they repeatedly called him Ben, Ben yeah. Carson. Yeah. Yeah, and so, made sport you know, of them. And, that yeah. was not, of course, that was not characterized as being, you know, an insult, nor was it characterized as being racist. But in this case, when you don't refer to Jill Biden as Dr. Jill Biden, although she's got a PhD in education yeah. in a poorly written thesis, you are a misogynist. My uh, favorite part of the whole Tucker thing was comparing her to Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good line. <laughs> he's, got, he's been on fire all week. Yeah, he has that. been. And and uh, Ken Altshuler, uh, who has a Juris Doctorate degree as an attorney, um, do, he, he, by the way, did tell me that I do not have to call him doctor. <laughs> that was know that I would never call him doctor. Yes, under any I, I wouldn't either. That, uh, however, was very magnanimous of him, that's for sure. All right. Yeah, of course he uh, cancer, Cancel culture, that is. Uh, struck again this week, and we had a feeling it was just a matter of time. The Cleveland Indians gave in to the mob, and they have announced that they're going to change their name, although uh, they, they aren't going to do it now. They're going to do it down the line, I guess, sometime in 2021. Um, this comes six, eight months after the Washington Redskins gave in, and Daniel Snyder gave in to the uh, mob. Can you put the Redskins and the Indians in different categories, Dean, because that's what I do. The Redskins name, you can, I personally can see where that's offensive. The Indians, the only thing that I ever thought was offensive was the caricature of Chief Wahoo. Yeah, I guess you'd have to ask the people who feel offended by it. Right. I, you know, that's, that's all the, and, and, and the poll always suggested about the, the Redskins was that you know, 95% of all Native Americans never felt offended. And, you know, in fact, it was a term of honor. Uh, you know, when you sing the song Hail to the Redskins, it's about bravery and courage. And over time, the name, which at one point, as you said, probably was condescending, came to mean something else. So I'd preface it by saying that, that it was always a, a big subject here. And in the Washington Post, they'd always go back to the surveys and the polls. And frankly, you know, a couple of years ago, it was put to rest. They were not going to change it. Even some of the sports writers who had, who had said that uh, we need to change it. Had, had sort of you know done a, a complete new turn. Now this year changed everything. So I would agree with you on that subject. And I thought the same exact thing. The term Indians is, is almost sterile. It's innocuous. Why are you doing this? Um, and in a related story, if you saw in San Francisco, I think they're thinking about changing the name of <laughs> of, a, of a school named after Abraham Lincoln. So right. Where does this stop? Does this stop at well? Uh, let's but, but let's back up to the Lincoln School in San Francisco. Uh, they're they're doing this because they feel like black lives ma didn't matter enough to Abe Lincoln. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's it, it, it's absurd, and I and I was I was thinking about this the other day. Like, what about what about the Patriots? I mean, the Patriots were you know uh, obviously part of the the, the English um, um, em Empire, and you know became the the, pre the uh, predecessors to American slavery or participated in American. Where does it stop? It sounds a little bit. Hyper hyperbolic right now, Mike, but yeah. where does this stop? It's they not going to. They can do this with, no, it's not. If they can do it with the term Indian, they can do it with the term Patriot. They can do it with any term. Um, when it's, they're, it's when they're not talking about changing the name of a school, but they are, that's named after Abraham Lincoln because they say black lives didn't matter enough to him. Um, that is the epitome of my statement. We are living in the stupidest times ever. The man freed the slaves. I, I don't know. Yeah, and they just, they just changed the name of two schools here, one after Jefferson and one after George Mason. Yeah. I mean, to, you know, to, to go back and look throughout all of society and all of history for any character without sin, and then, you know, um, you, you will not find one. You, may, you will find one, right? But there are churches named after Jesus. <laughs> so the, the the problem is you could do this with Martin Luther Martin Luther King statue, right? You could do it with any statue, any school. You will find that historical figures were always flawed, some deeper than others, um, but they were also, you know, it was got to be taken in the context of history of when this happened. So they are going to be hard pressed to find characters in history that they want to keep. But as you know, it's going to be selective. They will they will select the ones they like. 
and they will they will reject the ones they do not like. I, I, I think at some point in time, what their goal is is uh, you know they're they're going to pick a year uh, when they feel like history can begin at that point, and everything that was prior to that is simply bad. Everything everybody was racist or misogynist or some sort of ist. And, and time for them, we'll say, have started in 2011 or so. I don't know. Because that's how arbitrary it seems. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, what is going to be next? Is it going to be uh, uh, those who are opposed to gay marriage in a certain period of time? Well, then I guess you're going to have to take down all the Obama stuff because he was mm. fundamentally for a man and woman, you know, marriage between a man and a woman. But, but you're right. It's random and it's arbitrary. It's a bad exercise to, to have. I do think, like, you know, maybe there are some bad characters that, and shouldn't be in public places, but they are few and far and in between. But when, when we're talking about people like Lincoln and Jefferson, we, we, we really need to put this genie back in the bottle. And, and I, I think the Democratic Party, and I, I forgot who it was, was talking about it, there's going to be a civil war. And this is going to be part mm. of that civil war, which is which side is going to win out. Is it going to be these loons who want to continue to do this? Or is it going to be people who are reasonable who can look back in history and say, let's put it all in context. Nobody was perfect. America was an experiment in human freedom that over the course of time did better for freedom of all people. And these people all helped advance it, although slowly and not at the pace at which some people want, but they were important in that fight. He's Dean Scottress. I'm Mike Violet. This is Contact Sports. We do it every Friday. Another week has come and gone, Dean. And Congressman Eric Swalwell is still being ignored by the media. It doesn't change the fact that he slept with a Chinese spy and he's as dirty as they come, but the media is not interested. Not interested at all. And again, this was this was the guy who was the poster boy for you know. Uh, the, at times, it suggested that the uh, the president was a was a, was Russian, a Russian spy, spy or yep. a Russian uh, asset. Um, and if you look back in, in the timeline, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal this week that looks at the timeline, which made made it all the more curious for me. That I think it was 2015. The FBI came to him after you know years of of uh, of you know, um, having a relationship with uh, Fang Fang, I think her name was, or became known as, um, he, he finally ended the relationship. But shortly after that, Nancy Pelosi put him on the House Intelligence Committee, where we know he became, you know, the, the, the face of the House Intelligence Committee. How does somebody go from, uh, you know, having a relationship with a Chinese spy to being put as a backbencher in a position of authority on one of the more powerful and influential uh, House committees. Oh, there's nothing That's curious there, Dean. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, we, we've all known that, you know, and it doesn't stop in California with just Swalwell. I mean, of course, uh, Diane Feinstein had her problems with her driver uh, for for several uh, years. So this whole thing is serious, and it, it gets back to the, the theme that you and I have every single week. Had this been somebody else, I mean, look, look at Ron Johnson and God bless him, the outburst he had because he was being called a Russian asset and he had a, a little bit of a blow up in, in committee this week, rightfully so, uh, with another senator who had called him a Russian asset. Think about if the shoe were on the other foot and the reaction that would be, we'd be having. And this is getting to critical mass now because we are all, I use your term, sort of shrugging when these things happen mm. because there, there seems to be, you know, there. There's no coverage of it, and, and we're seeing the power of that to shape, really, I guess, political opinion. And the real sad part about it is it's not going to change anybody's vote or opinion at the end of the day, even if they did cover it. They're fine with it. Like, I know we've made people wait 20 minutes through another edition of Contact Sports, but people literally, literally their mouths are watering right now, Dean, to find out what you have planned to put on the Traeger this weekend. Now, last weekend... It was those tomahawk ribeyes. Oh, What's this they weekend? Were they were good. Man. Oh well, man! I have to first issue. I have to issue a correction, um, and this is kind of embarrassing from last week's uh, discussion, which is I was chastised after after we we talked on and, and my daughter Zoe listened to our um, our our mm-hmm. podcast or whatever you want to call it, and um, I said she was a sophomore. Oh. <laughs> She's a junior. Oh, Zoe. And, uh, and she was going to get on air and actually uh, do it herself, but I need to do it. Uh, okay. So, so that, that, let me issue that correction, and that's embarrassing. But um, anyway. Uh, well, let me just say this State. about that, Zoe. There's going to come a point where um, when we make you <laughs> younger than you actually are, you're going to like it. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, it was so last weekend, I think I told you there were five, six boys here. It's yep. become the, uh, the football sort of, I guess, tailgating event for all Jack's friends. Yep. Um, they are asking for an encore performance. Those things were fantastic. So, uh, I think we'll probably do, uh, the same thing. Um, uh, there was one boy in particular who missed it. I saw him this week in the weight room with Jackson and he's requested it. So we'll, we'll do a couple of them. Not as many because those are, those took a while, but they're hard to do. But those tomahawk steaks are, are tough to beat. I can't wait to, he- I, first of all, I can't wait to see the pictures on Facebook and Instagram, but I can't wait to hear about it. Dino? Someday, Mike. Thanks. Someday for- oh, oh so enjoy. this, this is our um, last scheduled visit. That's true. Um, we could probably do a special maybe on Wednesday. I'll be in touch with you about maybe doing something sooner. I want a full hour like 10 for heaven's <laughs> sake. I deserve it. We'll see if we can work on that, my friend. Have a good weekend. All right. Right. Dean Scotras, Contact Sports. Sorry, Zoe. You're a junior. <laughs> 7.57. I'm Mike Violet. It's the Mike Violet Show. Travis Lasarchik does get a whole hour, and it begins next as we go all sports. Merry Christmas from all of us here at Legacy 1160 WSKW. Delta Ambulance is the area's leading provider of high-quality emergency services and medical transportation in Central Maine. You can always rely on Delta for safe transportation for routine or critical care transfers to and from any health care facility or home, regardless of distance. Since 1972, Delta Ambulance has been standing by, ready to help when you need it most. Learn more about the difference Delta makes at deltaambulance.org. Compassion, leadership, excellence. That's Delta Ambulance. The end of the year is bringing with it big savings on new vehicles during the big finish sales event going on now at Height Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Stop in and save now through December 31st. Height Chrysler Dodge Jeep, 507 Lakewood Road, Clow's Corner, Madison. Electrical repair should never be done without the knowledge of how to do it safely. Better yet, skip that stress and let Kennebec Electric and Lighting take care of it for you. Kennebec Electric has offered professional electric and lighting service and expert installation in homes and businesses for over 37 years. And they stand behind that experience with a guarantee on all their work. Kennebec Electric and Lighting. Contact them for all your electric and lighting servicing, including installations and repairs at 861-7028 or online at kennebecelectric.com. Hi, it's Doug and Dan from Generators of Maine in Belgrade. Are you working from home? Will your children be home doing schoolwork? And you know how important it is to have access to the reliable power source. That's why you need a Kohler generator from Generators of Maine. Kohler generators deliver reliable power whenever yours goes out. And we're always happy to offer delivery and installation. Get prepared today for those upcoming power outages with a Kohler generator from Generators of Maine. Stop by our location in Belgrade. Visit online at generatorsofmaine.com and like us on Facebook. Hi, Seth Batty with Rockland Ford here. I'm pleased to announce that this year we're going to make Christmas special with our first ever Christmas is for Kids program. I know how special a program like this could be because when I was young, it saved many Christmases for my family and I am honored to finally give back. What we're going to do is touch the lives of 50 children and many families in the surrounding area by putting presents under the tree for kids that otherwise would not have a Christmas. These kids have been struggling with medical issues within their family, and we are stepping up to help those who have helped us in the past. This month, when you buy a car at Rockland Ford, $100 will go towards this program to help purchase presents and food for these families. If you would like to help, Call us at Rockland Ford to make your donation or come drop off presents in our drop box at Rockland Ford off Route 1 in Thomaston to help make this holiday season special. From the Home Auto Group Studios, Farmington Ford and Franklin Chrysler in Farmington, this is WSKW, Skowhegan, Augusta, Waterville, Legacy 1160.
who more than self Yeah, country love And the mercy more than life America Continuity of government, the reason why members of Congress and the Supreme Court are receiving the COVID-19 vaccine soon. This morning, Vice President Mike Pence will be vaccinated, along with Second Lady Karen Pence and Surgeon General Jerome Adams. At some point today, another vaccine could be officially approved after an FDA panel recommended Moderna's vaccine for emergency authorization. With Moderna now on track, Operation Warp Speed tells us they're going to ship out 8 million doses of vaccines next week, 6 million of the Moderna vaccine and 2 million more of the Pfizer vaccine. They say they will hit their goal of 20 million doses by the end of the year. That's ABC's Tom Yamas. But right now, there are a record number of people hospitalized in the U.S., over 114,000. Congress may work through the weekend as it tries to reach a deal on a new round of economic relief. Home Depot is paying a nearly $21 million penalty to the EPA for failing to ensure contractors followed rules regarding lead paint. This is ABC News. An animal rights group has lost its bid to free an elephant from a New York zoo. ABC's Todd Ant has the story. The non-human rights project said Happy the Elephant was unlawfully imprisoned at the Bronx Zoo, where she's been for more than 40 years, and a petition by the project was pushing for her to get human-like rights and be moved to a sanctuary. In February, New York state courts wrote that animals are not legally persons and ruled against the petition. On Thursday, an appellate court upheld that ruling. The Wildlife Conservation Society, which runs the zoo, said it was a victory for common sense. The animal rights group said it would continue to press on with its legal battle. Todd Ant, ABC News, New York. 21 people are now facing charges in what investigators say was a drug trafficking ring run through university frat houses in North Carolina. The suspects allegedly ran over a million dollars worth of drugs through fraternity houses in places like Duke and the University of North Carolina. The drugs running the gamut from pot and steroids to cocaine and LSD. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News. I worry about lots of things. My finances, 
my grandkids. If you're 65 or older, you have enough things to worry about. Pneumococcal pneumonia shouldn't be one of them. Even healthy adults 65 and older are at increased risk for this potentially serious bacterial lung disease that can disrupt your life for weeks. Help protect yourself with the Prevnar 13 pneumococcal 13 valent conjugate vaccine, diphtheria CRM197 protein. Prevnar 13 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 13 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Prevnar 13 does not protect against all strains of the disease. Don't get Prevnar 13 if you have had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with a weakened immune system may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most commonly reported side effect was pain at the injection site. For additional common side effects and full prescribing information, please call 1-866-694-9300 or visit Prevnar13.com. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 13. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Crisos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. This morning, we're learning that Maine will get 40% fewer doses of Pfizer vaccine in next week's shipment. Operation Warp Speed told the CDC it'll get 8,700 doses instead of 13,600. A Maine CDC spokesperson said Operation Warp Speed did not provide an explanation for the reduction, but it means the state won't have enough doses to vaccinate residents and staff at all long-term care facilities in Maine. The head of the FDA, meanwhile, says his agency will move quickly to authorize the second COVID-19 vaccine to fight the pandemic. He says regulators have spoken with Moderna, which co-developed the vaccine with the National Institutes of Health. This comes after a panel of FDA advisors ruled that the benefits of the vaccine outweighed the risks for those 18 years and older. In sports, all players on the UMaine men's ice hockey team are quarantining. University officials have announced a positive case through antigen testing. All team activities have been halted. Coaches and staff were not considered close contacts. The women's team will still head to Providence this weekend for two games against the Friars. Meanwhile, the UMaine men's basketball team is set to tip off its season this Saturday and Sunday down in Hartford. The Black Bears have yet to play a game this season due to COVID concerns. And in the NFL, the Los Angeles Chargers beat the Las Vegas Raiders 30-27 to last night. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's. Collision Center. If your car is wrecked and you don't know where to go. Take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's. Collision Centers. M-O-O-D-Y. own parking lot maybe you get hit a lot driving through the green light suddenly your side swipe put it in reverse but it turned out that it was first take it to moody's take it to moody's collision centers Interested in cutting your fuel oil bills by as much as 40%? Then call your Energy Kinetic System 2000 Premier Dealer. Cools, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. And ask about the System 2000. You can save up to 40% off your heating cost and have all the hot water you need with the System 2000 from Energy Kinetics. Whether you're planning on replacing your current boiler or building a new home, stop into the Cool Showroom at 19 North Street in Waterville and see the System 2000 from Energy Kinetics. The System 2000 runs on oil or propane, can be converted between fuels with a simple burner change is whisper quiet and can save you up to 40% off your heating fuel cost. If you own an older boiler, help keep it running more efficiently with a cleaning and tune-up. And don't forget, when you need emergency service, call Hool's 24-hour service department at 872-6762. Hool's Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, your System 2000 premier dealer. At Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, they understand that when faced with difficult and challenging times, it's a comfort to know that we'll get through this together. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union is committed to keeping not only their members safe, but also their dedicated employees. They're following CDC guidelines, protocols, and social distancing at all of their facilities. They may have changed some of their usual ways of doing business, but they haven't changed how they treat their members. Their safest services are available through drive-up, ATM, telephone, easy banking, 
banking, mobile banking, by phone or appointment. Lobbies are currently open in the Skowhegan and Farmington branches, and with the holidays just around the corner, Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union has a reason to brighten your season with their holiday loan special going on now through December 31st. Just ask any of their friendly and knowledgeable loan officers in Skowhegan, Farmington, Madison, Kingfield, or Stratton for complete details or online at f-sfcu.com. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, where their most important member is you. Member NCUA. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Some clouds to start this morning, then becoming mostly sunny. Still cool today with highs in the mid to upper 20s. Partly sunny tomorrow, highs in the low 30s. Cloudy mid 30s on Sunday with a chance for a scattered rain or snow shower in the afternoon and evening. Highs near 40 for the start of next week. Thank you, Lexi. We have sunshine still. Well, as Lexi says, chilly out there. I'll go with that. We'll run with that. It's 13 in Skowhegan. 13 in Waterville, all the way up to 15 degrees here in Augusta. And you're up to date from Legacy 1160 WSKW. It's like your father is on the radio every day. When I was 17, I drank some very good beer. I drank some very good beer I purchased with a fake ID. My name was Brian McKee. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. It's 812. Good morning. It's also a thank Buddha. It's Friday, Friday. I'm Mike Violet. This show brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting, 861-7028. Online at KennebecElectric.com. You can live stream the show, John's show, Conserving the Main Outdoors, which is coming up at noon today. Any of our great music, the greatest oldies of all time. By going to Legacy1160.com, clicking on the Listen Live button. That's brought to you by the Harry J. Smith Company, Sanker Avenue in Waterville, Facebook Live, YouTube. Our live audio and video are there, brought to you by our friends at Moody's Collision Center, making his final appearance of the 2020 campaign. And 2020 ends for Travis today here on this program. And he's here with us now. He is the sitting and standing main sports writer of the year, Mr. Travis LaSarge. Good morning, Travis. Good morning, Mike. How are you? I'm fine. I'm somewhat melancholy, however, over your final appearance of the year. Are you? Not really, but maybe we can set up a nice cliffhanger so people will have to turn in, <laughs> tune in to 2021. You know, when I think of you, Travis, I think a lot of things come to mind. I mean, you're witty, you're urbane, you're, uh, you know, you're very literate. Um, I, I, I never think that you could possibly even be melancholy. It does. Melancholy doesn't appear to be in your wheelhouse. You know, it's probably not melancholy. It's probably just gas, but I'll be all right. It's probably what? Just gas. <laughs> it's probably just skepticism, you know, just the plain old, but that's part of being a sports writer and being a reporter. You got to be skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> Such is our curse. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, I, you know, if you want to somehow set up a cliffhanger, I'm certainly, um, I'm certainly fine with that. Um, what I wanted to do today, and I, I have uh, conveniently left you totally unprepared for this, oh is <laughs> I don't know if we can turn it into a cliffhanger, but nonetheless, um, the New England Patriots, of course, playing the Miami Dolphins this weekend in a game that is, well, somewhat meaningful, but not really all that meaningful. It's meaningful for Miami. The Patriots are, are still in it, even though they're really not still in it. So yeah, we, mathematically. Yeah, I mean, there's math, and then there's you know whether they're really going to make it, and I mean, it takes it's going to take all yeah. kinds of scenarios for them to not make it. So we may be watching the final days of Cam Newton as the starting quarterback of the New England Patriots. I wish we were going to get a look at Jared Stidham, but apparently that is not going to happen. So what I wanted to do was talk about who's going to be the quarterback for the New England Patriots in 2021 and i have a list of candidates and what i want you to do is i don't know if you want to use a scale of one to ten with one being no chance and ten being yep he's it the chances of any one of these men that i'm about to mention these names that i'm about to mention being the patriots starting quarterback you game i'm game as long as i am not on the list because i certainly would give myself a big fat zero um i would go less than zero um if it were <laughs> me okay yeah. So I have uh, uh, a list of, of free agent quarterbacks. Quarterbacks will be free agents next year. 
Um, the number one name on the list is Dakota Prescott, late of the Dallas Cowboys. He'll be an unrestricted free agent. His contract right now, which ends this year, $31,409,000. What do you think the chances of Dak being the Patriots quarterback are? Two. Two. I think he'll re-sign with Dallas. Okay. Next up, Phillip Rivers, 39 years old, now playing, of course, for the Indianapolis Colts, but he only signed a one-year deal. Uh, two or three. I think if he doesn't retire, he'll re-sign with the uh, Colts. Okay. Moving on. Fitz Magic, baby. Ryan Fitzpatrick playing, of course, in Miami, although Tua has taken over now. He will be available after the season. He's an unrestricted free agent. Boy, the Patriots are the only team in the AFC East he has not played for, right? <laughs> That's legit. I'll give him a five just because he might want to finish the set, complete the collection. Well, exactly. I mean, what a wonderful way to go out at 38 now, almost 39 years old for Ryan Fitzpatrick to run the table in the AFC East and play for yeah, You can come visit Harvard, his alma mater. That's exactly. He's a Harvard guy. So, it, I mean, yeah. it, it, it almost makes too much sense. All right, let's go out west where Tyrod Taylor, of course, will never play another game for the San Diego Chargers. And we saw why last night with the uh, continued terrific performance of uh, Justin, what's his name? Um, I can't remember his. Uh, Justin uh, Herbert. Thank you. Uh, uh, so so Tyrod Taylor uh, is uh, is going to be an under, he's 32 years old. He has played in the AFC East as well with the Buffalo Bills, which, of course, you know, what are his chances? He seems to have become a nice kind of uh, placeholder for teams with a young quarterback they're looking to develop. So if the Patriots were to draft a guy, I could see them maybe signing a guy like Tyrod Taylor to come in for a year. So I'll put him at a four or five. Okay, he played for the New England Patriots. Now he plays for the San Francisco 49ers. He's not a free agent, but there are all kinds of rumblings that the 49ers are going to cut ties with Jimmy G. Would Jimmy G, could Jimmy G come back to New England? If San Francisco is looking to either deal him or release him, I would put that at a six or a seven. You know he has a relationship with Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels, and I think he might be a good fit. I agree. I think there's a great chance. I would go seven on Jimmy Garoppolo coming back, obviously, if the 49ers are ready to cut bait, and it sounds like they might be. Okay, one more name, and this may be well, two more names. This one is very intriguing to me. Jameis Winston, now of the New Orleans Saints. Two. I don't think he's you don't going think anywhere. He's, he's not Bill's cup of tea. I know our friend B.L. Lippert's a big oh, fan yeah. of Jameis Winston, are you but I'm kidding? not sold on him yet. I, he, I, he would let Jameis Winston sleep with his wife. I mean, he's, <laughs> he yeah, loves, just, he loves I, I, Jameis I, I Winston. I haven't seen that at the NFL level. I know he, he throws a lot of in, uh, touchdowns when he does when he did play for Tampa a couple of years ago. He threw a lot of interceptions, too. Well, he's, the decision-making uh, just not there. He's the classic uh, quarterback who can keep both teams in the game at the same time. Yes. Uh, and, uh, oh, who's the, uh, oh, the other one is not a, a free agent, but I am sure wants out of where he is. And that is Matthew Stafford of the Detroit Lions. I would love to see Stafford if he was made available. I think he's still got some good good years ahead of him. Uh, he's been in the league, what, 10 or 11 years now? Yeah. And he's, take. he's got to have PTSD after playing yeah. uh, all those years with the Lions and getting his brains beaten out. And still, you know, he's padded the stats. There's no question about it. But yeah. I, I kind of liken it to... Um, Jim Plunkett getting out of New England, and you know that's he, a good analogy. He yeah. went to San Francisco; that didn't work out. But then he goes to the Raiders, and we know, um, you know, Super Bowls followed. Um, but you know, when he was here, obviously he was shell shocked because the Patriots were dreadful. Um, I, I think you get Stafford out of there, you get him in New England with competent coaching. Um, maybe you know a few more weapons might be nice. But I, I, I he would he if I could make a choice, Travis, he would be my choice. Yeah, I think if you can get him out of Detroit, I would put that at a seven for you know chance of him being in the Yeah, window. and what you've got to figure uh, there is, you know, new coaching regime is going to come in. Uh, there's a rebuild, obviously, because the Lions suck again. Uh, Stafford's been through, what, two or three of those already? And I oh, think, you, you know, at some point you've got to be thinking, my God, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, I, I, I'm 32 or 33 years old, and... The, I, I'm at the end of the prime of my career, and I got to bust out of here. And I, so, please, Lions, deal me, draft a quarterback, find somebody else, 
and, uh, and, you know, send me to Foxborough or send me to San Francisco or something like that, because I think there's some real good years there. And wh- while I think he is a little beaten and battered, I think there's enough left. Yeah, I think he certainly uh, has the football savvy and uh, abilities to figure out a McDaniels Belichick offense and be successful in it. Okay, so we've 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 handicapped that. So um, I think you 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 might have given the highest score to Jimmy G. But if you if I said right now, Travis, the one thing you absolutely think is going to happen. When it comes to the starting quarterback for the Patriots when they open the 2021 season, who's going to be their quarterback? Oh, gee, that's a good question. I know. That's uh, why I, I was, asked it. The only thing I know for sure is they're going to have a quarterback. I know that, oh. but I, you, I, you <laughs> must give me an answer. I, you know, I, I probably, Jared Stidham at this point, I, I don't think they'll re-sign Newton, and I think maybe if they draft someone, that Stidham will be the guy to kind of fill the space until whoever they draft is ready see travis i'm gonna be a dreamer and i'm gonna say <laughs> i'm gonna dream because a man has to have a dream does he not it's the christmas season chase your dream i Mike. know and you know you know all children even in children at heart like me have have that sparkle that twinkle in their eye of a dream and my dream is that matthew stafford is the starting quarterback for the new england patriots for the 2021 season yeah, I don't know what his contract situation is either as to what it would take to get him in a trade. You know, we're talking a second-round pick, a third-round pick. You know, who knows? Well, yeah, it's obviously not going to be a first. I mean, we're talking about a lot no, of you tread, a first, you right? know, a lot of tread right. on the tire. And, yeah. um, and um, I would think a salary cap hit. I don't know what his salary is, but it's got to be in the mid-20 million range. At um, least. So the Patriots do have room there um, because of the opt-outs this year and and some other things happening. There is room there. So I think they can do that. The, you know, the question is the compensation in the form of draft picks or whatever the case may be. And I think you could probably, I don't know, maybe it's optimistic, maybe a third, you know, at the top of your draft picks, a third might be able to get them here. But I think it would be a premium thing to do for this team. Um, among other things, but I, you know, they've got to be very careful with their draft picks because this roster does need some replenishing to it for sure. Yeah, and some of the guys who they've counted on for many years are not getting younger. You're looking at it's going to be the end of the line for guys like Devin McCourty and you know some of the others on that defense pretty soon. I don't think Stephon Gilmore will be here much longer. Um, they've got some rebuilding coming up ahead of them. Yeah, I mean, Gilmore is still young enough to, you know, and still productive enough. Um, you know, the McCordys, I, I think we're we're it, we're we're at the point of Bill um, being uh, let's get rid of them a year too early rather than a year too late. Um, so it might be time to cut because I think they've got enough depth there with the other players. The the they continue to hit on undrafted free agents in the secondary, and they continue to be fine there. And and with the development of Kyle Duggar, they've certainly got. Um, uh, uh, plenty of help there at safety, Adrian Phillips and more at safety. Yeah, and with, you know, if Dante Hightower comes back next season, who knows for how long. Um, they do seem to be a little better on the line, so we'll see there. But uh, definitely they're going to have some salary cap, uh, not issues, but some chances to, to make make a splash maybe. We'll yeah, see. yeah. I mean, uh, th- there definitely is uh, is some room there to go after some people if you do it in a very judicial do- – see, I shouldn't have tried to say that word. If you're very <laughs> picky about who you try to go after and how much money you try to spend, the, they've, they've had limited, limited success in doing that. But, uh, look, I, I look at the base of this team. The offensive line, I think, is, is very good. Um, but there is a real lack of talent in other areas. And they've been able to do a pretty good job this year of covering it up for the most part. But in order to compete, obviously, from uh, the standpoint of not having a real number one quarterback, that's that's job number one. But the rest of this roster definitely needs to be uh, replenished. We're going to replenish our commercial load here, Jim. Uh, excuse me, um, Jim. Why did I call you Jim? Um, has anybody anybody ever called you Jim before, Jim? You're the first. <laughs> Well, Jim, you sit tight, my friend. <laughs> We're going to take a All break right. here. We will pay some bills. We will hear from CBS 13's John Kreisels. <laughs> and then go back more with Jim Lasargic on the other side from the Sentinel and the KJ. It's Mike Violet on the Mike Violet Show, Legacy 1160, WSKW. Jim.
Now your political insights from ABC News. Congress's physician's office telling members in both the House and Senate that their staffs will be getting the vaccine due to continuity of government, meaning that it's more important for them not to get the virus, so federal business continues uninterrupted. Speaker Pelosi and Republican Senate Leader McConnell announcing they'll get their vaccine soon. Most Americans must wait months for their shots, as health care workers and those in nursing homes are at the front of the line. House members will get a closed-door explanation of how another government compromised computers across U.S. federal agencies and exactly what information they were able to steal. Homeland Security has already told many of those agencies exactly how hackers infiltrated what were supposed to be secure networks and what steps they can take now to prevent further attacks. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he believes Congress is close to a deal on a new COVID-19 relief package. Those are your political insights. I'm Andy Field, ABC News. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's. Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go. Take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust, and it won't be a fuss. Take it to Moody's. Collision Centers. M-O-O-D-Y. Your kid was talking on the cell phone, drove right through your own home, sitting in the parking lot, maybe you get hit a lot, driving through the green light, suddenly your side swipe, put it in reverse, but it turned out that it was first. Take it to Moody's, take it to Moody's, collision centers. If you've checked that gift list twice and it's got something different for everyone on it, just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassalboro Townline. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Are you worried about spending too much? Townline Antiques is here to help with that too, because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 40, and some even 50% off their selection. There's always new cool and unique gift ideas, including collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and so much more. Of course, the problem is you'll not only find lots of great gift ideas, you'll come across things that you might want to take home too. But with their December sale of up to 50% off store-wide, you can take them all home for less. So don't miss out on the Santa size sale with savings up to 50% off this December at Townline Antiques, open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 5, Route 201, right on the Winslow Vassalboro Town Line. The end of the year is bringing with it big savings on new vehicles during the big finish sales event going on now at Height Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Stop in and save now through December 31st. Height Chrysler Dodge Jeep, 507 Lakewood Road, Clow's Corner, Madison. Hi, it's Doug and Dan from Generators of Maine in Belgrade. Are you working from home? Will your children be home doing schoolwork? And you know how important it is to have access to the reliable power source. That's why you need a Kohler generator from Generators of Maine. Kohler generators deliver reliable power whenever yours goes out. And we're always happy to offer delivery and installation. Get prepared today for those upcoming power outages with a Kohler generator from Generators of Maine. Stop by our location in Belgrade. Visit online at generatorsofmaine.com and like us on Facebook. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Crisos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. This morning, we're learning that Maine will get 40% fewer doses of Pfizer vaccine in next week's shipment. Operation Warp Speed told the CDC it'll get 8,700 doses instead of 13,600. A Maine CDC spokesperson said Operation Warp Speed did not provide an explanation for the reduction, but it means the state won't have enough doses to vaccinate residents and staff at all long-term care facilities in Maine. The head of the FDA, meanwhile, says his agency will move quickly to authorize the second COVID-19 vaccine to fight the pandemic. He says regulators have spoken with Moderna, which co-developed the vaccine with the National Institutes of Health. This comes after a panel of FDA advisors ruled that the benefits of the vaccine outweighed the risks for those 18 years and older. In sports, all players on the UMaine men's ice hockey team are quarantining. University officials have announced a positive case through antigen testing. All team activities have been halted. Coaches and staff were not considered close contacts. The women's team will still head to Providence this weekend for two games against the Friars. Meanwhile, the UMaine men's basketball team is set to tip off its season this Saturday and Sunday down in Hartford. The Black Bears have yet to play a game this season due to COVID concerns. 
And in the NFL, the Los Angeles Chargers beat the Las Vegas Raiders 30-27 to last night. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Hi, Seth Batty with Rockland Ford here. I'm pleased to announce that this year we're going to make Christmas special with our first ever Christmas is for Kids program. I know how special a program like this could be because when I was young, it saved many Christmases for my family and I am honored to finally give back. What we are going to do is touch the lives of 50 children and many families in the surrounding area by putting presents under the tree for kids that otherwise would not have a Christmas. These kids have been struggling with medical issues within their family and we are stepping up to help those who have helped us in the past. This month, when you buy a car at Rockland Ford, $100 will go towards this program to help purchase presents and food for these families. If you would like to help, Call us at Rockland Ford to make your donation or come drop off presents in our drop box at Rockland Ford off Route 1 in Thomaston to help make this holiday season special. Interested in cutting your fuel oil bills by as much as 40%? Then call your Energy Kinetic System 2000 Premier Dealer. Cools, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. And ask about the System 2000. You can save up to 40% off your heating costs and have all the hot water you need with the System 2000 from Energy Kinetics. Whether you're planning on replacing your current boiler or building a new home, stop into the cool showroom at 19 North Street in Waterville and see the System 2000 from Energy Kinetics. The System 2000 runs on oil or propane, can be converted between fuels with a simple burner change is whisper quiet and can save you up to 40% off your heating fuel cost. If you own an older boiler, help keep it running more efficiently with a cleaning and tune-up. And don't forget, when you need emergency service, call Hool's 24-hour service department at 872-6762. Hool's Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, your System 2000 Premier Dealer. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Some clouds to start this morning, then becoming mostly sunny, still cool today with highs in the mid to upper 20s. Partly sunny tomorrow, highs in the low 30s. Cloudy mid 30s on Sunday with a chance for a scattered rain or snow shower in the afternoon and evening. Highs near 40 for the start of next week. Thank you, Lexi. Sun's out. Not exactly warm, but the sun is out. It's 11 in Skowhegan. It's 14 in Waterville. We've got sunshine, 11 degrees here in Augusta, and you're up to date from Legacy 1160 WSKW. You think it? He says it. Yada, yada, yada. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Thank Buddha. It's Friday, Friday in progress. Friday, December 18th, one week till Christmas 2020. The Mike Violet Show brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting, 861-7028. You can find them online at KennebecElectric.com. You can also find the show online. If you want to listen live, just go to Legacy1160.com. Click on the Listen Live button. It's brought to you by the Harry J. Smith Company, Sanger Avenue in Waterville. And you can watch us on Facebook. Listen there as well, Facebook and YouTube, by going to facebook.com slash legacy1160wskw, or just go to YouTube and type in legacy1160. We pop up, and that feed brought to you by our friends at Moody's Collision Center. Of course, Friday means Travis Lasargic in the 8 o'clock hour, sitting and standing main sports writer of the year, and up for the award again, Travis. Um, when are you going to find out if you're going to keep your crown? Mid January, mid January. Okay, mid. So, so it's closing. It, we, the suspense will be over soon. Yeah, the voting is going on right now for whatever that's worth. I, I'm not a member of the National Sports Media Association, so I don't even get a vote for myself. Um, so we'll find out. So, who does get to vote for you? Anybody we know? I don't know. I don't know who's the member of the, okay. the group. I appreciate their support, though. Yes, it's an honor. Well, of course, you know we're always rooting for you, and if we had a vote, we'd, we'd, we'd vote for you. So I appreciate it. The uh, University of Maine hockey team uh, would like to play a hockey game, but it doesn't appear as if that's ever going to happen. Yeah, they got in two games last weekend yeah, at no. UNH. Yeah. We're set to go to Lowell this weekend. A positive test in the, in the team um, postpones that for the week, so they're back on hold. So they're uh, on hold. Uh, the team is in quarantine. We'll wait and see what happens. University of Maine men, uh, you've been writing about them. Uh, they are trying to overcome a tremendous amount of, you know, personnel losses, and they were scheduled to get their season started. That didn't happen. Where do they stand? University of Maine's basketball, you mean? Yeah, the, the men. Yeah, uh, they will uh, be playing this weekend at Hartford to open up their America East Conference play. They were scheduled to play in that big, 
tournament at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, they were at their hotel and they had a positive test and had to turn around and head back to Orno. So they didn't get to play against the University of Virginia, which would have been a really tough opponent or, you know, even teams more their speed like Central Connecticut or Fordham. They've missed five games uh, that they can't get back and hopefully they can get this conference schedule going. They did add a game against Boston College next Tuesday. So that'll be a, just a chance to play. Yeah. You know, they're just, they just want to play, you know, whether it's against the America East teams or an ACC team like BC, they just want to get on the court. Yeah. And at this point you've got to play anybody who's willing to play you because of just right. everything. So, um, uh, the university of Maine women getting off to a very good start with the return of a star player. Yes. Blanca Milan looks like she has not missed a step <laughs> since, uh, missing most of last season with a torn ACL. Uh, 30 points, 14 rebounds in her first game uh, against uh, Providence last week that they won. Another strong outing when they defeated the University of Rhode Island. So now the Black Bears are going to play Northeastern on Sunday, and then they'll get their conference schedule going on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday at Hartford. And uh, a very interesting story that I wasn't aware of. Well, well I don't think anybody was, and, and I don't know how well-versed you are on it. Um, and that's um, UMaine, former UMaine coach Joanne McCauley, um, who, of course, left Maine, went to Michigan State, then went to Duke and had a tremendous amount of success. She's got a brand new book out um, about her battle with mental illness. It's called Secret Warrior. Um, I've seen there's a trailer that they've done for the book, and I've seen that. Extraordinary um, to hear about and uh, try to try to. Uh, just, you know, think about it. Um, it, it. What do you know about it? Anything? Probably not much more than you might. Okay. I know that, you know, the book is coming out soon. Um, boy, you know, she, to coach at the level she did for so long while, while battling, you know, this bipolar, you know, bipolar personal, you know, demon is, you know, impressive. I'm looking forward to getting a chance to read the book and, you know, maybe talking to Joanne at some point about it. I'm sure she'll be, kind of doing the media tour so yeah i mean uh, i was shocked when she left duke um and there were I, I i guess some rumors or other things about um uh maybe some i i don't know some over the top coaching or something like that i know certainly she was a you know a demanding coach but i always heard and thought that she was a very fair but i mean it just goes to show you yeah. that somebody like joanne mccauley who of course is a you know a native of brunswick um, and played, you know, high school basketball at, at Brunswick. Um, tremendously successful everywhere she went. She won battling this. It, 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 it shows you that there's really no demographic here. No, not at all. And, you know, for her to have the success she had at three different schools, like you may, Michigan State, who she took to the national championship game, I believe. Yes, she did. And, then, you know, having a, you know, very good um, stretch at Duke, um, all while struggling with this, uh, it's probably a testament to her character more than anything. Well, it's, you, you know, um, it, it's got to be a lifetime, day-to-day, minute-to-minute battle um, to yeah. be able to go out there and fight against that. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting a chance to talk to her as well. Um, and uh, the book, by the way, is called Secret Warrior. You should look for it. I'm sure you can find it at uh, your favorite bookstore, Amazon. Um, and I suspect it'll be uh, a, a great seller, and I hope it is for her. Um, Let's uh, let's shift gears and uh, move on um, to uh, the the baseball world. I, I, I as I follow the, uh, the the Red Sox signed Hunter McCray, Hunter uh, Renfro, uh, Hunter Renfro. They see see. There's the problem. Uh, or there's there's more than one Hunter Renfro who's a professional athlete. There's a Hunter Renfro who's a football player as well. So it's, yeah, a it's, receiver for the Raiders. Yeah. Exactly, and he played. I think he played at Clemson. He did. Yeah. Okay. So at least I got that right. So the Red Sox signed Hunter Renfro. He's a corner outfielder um, with tremendous power. He'll be a platoon player, I think, because he mashes left-handed pitching. Um, He hit 159 or 158, I think, last year. But, hey, it's 2020. We're just going to give everybody a mulligan on that. But there's all kinds of rumors around in the uh, Twitter sphere that the Red Sox are in you know they're in on everybody and they're looking to make all kinds of moves and they're going to be better and it's you know Alex Cora's and yet nobody's really done anything other than the Indians saying they're going to change their name nobody's really done anything here during the hot stove league. Yeah, I don't know what the holdup is on the hot stove season. It seems like usually by now we've had 
two or three big signings and a lot of little ones like this Hunter Renfro deal. Um, yeah, I don't know what everyone's waiting for. I really don't. Yeah, I, I don't either. I mean, there obviously are some, uh, you know, big name free agents out there. Uh, you know, Trevor Bauer, who won the Cy Young Award, DJ LeMayu, who's been, uh, you know, a, a marvelous player uh, for the Yankees. Red Sox need a second baseman. That'd be an interesting signing uh, for sure. Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing's happened. And usually in the past anyway, and of course you have to keep in mind with everything that you think about that it's 2020, but usually in the past, a lot of players and player agents wanted to get their guys settled before the holidays. Now it looks as if they don't want to get their guys settled until after the holidays. Yeah, we just had the virtual winter meetings. Maybe that's <laughs> part of it where they, they're not actually all at one spot wheeling and dealing. And uh, you'd think you'd think some guys would be doing virtual tours or something. Maybe you would, but it just even the rumor mill is not really strong. You know, you see the guys out there, like you mentioned, Trevor Bauer and George Springer, the center fielder, I think yeah. would be a good fit in Boston if they decide to step away from Jackie Bradley Jr. Um, but you're not hearing anything about these guys. None of the big names. No, uh, we had a signing this week, James McCann, a catcher, um, a, a kind of a, I, I think the Mets overpaid for him and I don't think he's worth the money, but Hey, yeah. you know, they've got a new owner with deep pockets and they're going to, they're going to, they're, they're going to be out there probably in on, on every one of the Red Sox, you know, obviously with, with uh, Vasquez don't need a, need a catcher, but you mentioned George Springer. Um, he's a new England kid. He grew up in Connecticut, his father and family. They were Red Sox fans. Um, he certainly is a better, I think, offensive package than Jackie Bradley Jr. Um, the defense, I don't think anybody plays better defense than Jackie Bradley Jr., but no. um, I, I think he's probably too expensive for the Red Sox. I think they feel like they can, you know, maybe bring Bradley back. And not no surprise, Scott Boros, his agent, uh, Bradley's agent this week, was talking uh, uh, Jackie in terms of food. Did you hear that? I heard he said he's the PB&J yeah. of baseball. You know, I have, you know, I, I'm kind of forgetting the whole gist of what Boris said, but it was an interesting comparison. Yeah. And, you know, Jackie's pretty smooth. He's not pretty smooth. He's, <laughs> very, he's very smooth out there. And, and, you know, offensively, uh, again, it's 2020, but that's as good as he's looked since that 30 game hit streak he had four or five years ago last year. He looked um, better at the plate. He was taking more pitches. He was driving the ball to left center field, which he should be doing anyway. And I think he's got a swing that can do that. Um, what do you think the odds are they bring him back? Ah, and maybe 50-50. I don't know if he's going to get blown out of the water by another team where the Red Sox are just going to say, yeah, you know, good luck to you. I don't know. You know, we just haven't heard any of the usual scuttlebutt about who's looking at whom. So, you know, I'd love to have him come back, but I you know, don't want to give him like a five or six year, hundred million dollar deal either. Yeah. He's so. and he's 31 years old. Um, right. uh, you know, if you could, and, and it's, it, you're right. If somebody's going to come along, it seems like, and blow him out of the water with a five year deal. And, you know, you know, those kind of numbers. And I think right now the Red Sox would, you know, give him a, you know, a three year deal, maybe at 15 million per or something like that. And that's probably not going to be enough. And they probably um, are, are, are best to not do that anyway and not get caught up and overpay this guy. Yeah, Scott Morris, if he does anything well, it's he gets teams thinking there's more interest in his players than maybe there is and gets a bidding war, you know, with a team against itself. Nobody does it better, yeah. man. He's he's yeah. done, he's done this for if, for decades. If Houston were to lose George Springer to say like the Mets, if they continue you know spending like crazy, then you know maybe Houston would be a a landing spot for Jackie Bradley Jr. Let's turn to the NBA, where tonight at the Garden at the TD Garden, the Celtics are going to play the Brooklyn Nets, and you know what that means? Kyrie Irving Kyrie, yeah. is back in town. The only bad thing about this is there won't be any fans there to boo him. Yeah, we'll see. You know, the Kyrie watches on. You know, for me to see how long it takes for he and uh, and Kevin Durant are just at each other. Well, I bet that's his buddy, though. They, you know, Kyrie he yeah. recruited KD. They were getting, right now. He is. Yeah, you, you, who knows? <laughs> I mean, Kyrie's already decided he's not going to talk to the media and you know eat the fines. Every well, week, so. yeah, but that's you, Travis. You're a pawn. Oh well, okay. Yeah, I'm you're, a. You're, you're, I guess I, he can go on his flat earth and talk to whoever or <laughs> not talk to whoever he wants to. I have often said that about you, Travis. You're, you know, 
you're you're just a pawn. Well, that the reference I'm making is is that that's what Kyrie Irving he issued a statement yeah. that said he wasn't going to talk, and that basically the media he did use the word pawns, and then he kind of backtracked from it because he actually talked to the media the other day. But you've got two very fragile psyches and souls and bodies here in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. They may be the two or two of the most talented players in the NBA. When healthy, mentally and physically, they are extraordinary players. The problem, of course, is rarely do they maintain any sort of consistency with either one of those things, whether it's mental or physical. Durant, of course, is coming off a torn Achilles, and we know Kyrie is going to have a sore throat at any time and miss six games. Yeah, they're inconsistent, talented, but inconsistent and frankly, selfish. Yeah, frankly, they're both pains in the asses, and I don't. I, I, I we, we, we've we've already dealt with Kyrie Irving. Thankfully, we'll never have to, we'll never have to deal with Kevin Durant. And and uh, you know, as great a player as he is, he is he is a colossal baby. Um, did you see where Gordon Hayward's hurt? <laughs> I did. I saw he broke his finger on yeah. the shooting hand. I, I got to say, I feel bad for the guy. The guy can't catch a, a health break. You know, through no fault of his own, a broken finger, you know, that horrific ankle injury from a few years ago. Um, then the groin just, or the hamstring. Seems like that's going to be the, the hallmark of this stage of his career. Just yeah, and it's almost like the, uh, the Utah Jazz gods, uh, since he left there, have put the whammy on him, and they don't want him to be healthy. No. He's a good player when he's on the court. He just has been you know, snake bit injury-wise. Yeah, he, he sure has. It's really It's really been a very tough struggle. Um, as we close things down here, uh, Travis, I, you know, I, I, you know, cliffhanger, I'm going to put that responsibility, that onus on you. I, I don't have yeah. anything <laughs> there, but where did we hide the gold? Yes. Yeah. Who shot Jr. Uh, you know, to pick, <laughs> pick your cliffhanger, um, yeah. uh, winter sports, uh, here, high school sports, uh, you know, schedules have been sent out. I got a bunch of them from athletic directors yesterday, uh, for January, they're uh, uh, are, they're ready to go. The question remains, you know, we've been down this road before. We did it in the fall, and then, of course, the rug was pulled out before. Uh, are we headed for that again? I hope not. The teams are practicing right now, or I shouldn't even say practicing, doing the, you know, individual workouts. Uh, hockey teams have found ice. Um, they're making it work despite all the, the hardships of lack of ice with the, the colleges and prep schools being unavailable. Um, it's really, I hope we have something, but when I see 500 plus cases a day, it's, it gives me pause. It makes me really wonder if, if uh, state's not going to step in and say, we can't do this. Yeah. Well, it just seems like that's where we're headed. It seems like there's yeah. no, no way around it. And I, you know, I got those schedules yesterday and, you know, want, and, and, and I will put together a broadcast schedule for us, but I just wonder if we're ever going to be able to get there and if it's going to yeah. be able to happen, it's, uh, and we should say some some counties are still not doing it. I think Andrew Scoggin County is still yellow, so they're you know waiting. Uh, York County, um, I think Oxford maybe too. Yeah. Somerset just went back from yellow to green, so those schools are finally able to do something this week. Uh, it's going to be a, a process. If if there is a season, not everyone's going to be taking part. No, uh, I know it's all, it's all fractured again, and it's going to be uh, if there is a season, it's going to be. Um, it's going to have that surreal feel to it. We've been through it in the fall. Didn't matter what sport it was. And certainly the football players didn't have a chance to play, you know, real regular football. And, uh, you know, I think the, you know, the, the, the uh, of all of the people, uh, you know, struggling against the, uh, you know, the, the, the scourge that is COVID-19, those people who are looking for hockey ice, man, you know, I, I have to tip my hats to them because it's not easy to come by. No, and we're seeing some, like Spruce Mountain last week announced that um, their school board voted to pause for yep. the winter. And now the community is kind of rallying and they're going to revisit that issue maybe even tonight. I'm not sure about the, the timing on that, but they're they're looking at it anyway. And some other schools have already said we're out. Um, so it's coming together like a jigsaw puzzle missing half the pieces. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, and the the Spruce Mountain thing was, from my perspective, was great to see. I was glad to see the community rally behind it. 
Um, but I, I, we just, I don't think we've seen enough of that. And I'm surprised we haven't seen more. Are you? A little bit. Yeah. I mean, we've seen the statewide, let them play kind of movement that had right. some rallies in Augusta in the late summer, early fall. But, um, at the local level, we haven't seen a ton. So maybe no. now with, if, if more communities go the way of Spruce Mountain, maybe we will see some more people kind of asking to revisit things. Well, perhaps we will. And uh, Travis, on that note, we will wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year because obviously we will be off on the 25th and also on the 1st. And we hope that you and yours have a safe and happy Christmas season, Travis. Thanks for 2020. As bad as it was, you were marvelous. Uh, thank you, Mike. And Merry Christmas to you and your family and friends as well. We'll talk to you next year. How about that? I can do that. All right. Thanks. Travis Lasarjic. Sitting in standing, Maine Sports Writer of the Year. 8.51. A break. And I'll close it down next as we get ready for the Freedom Pep Rally of John James. Coming up at 9 on Legacy 1160 WSKW. ABC Entertainment News. It's Chadwick Boseman's final role. I'm going to get me a band and make me some records. In Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, he plays a 1920s blues trumpeter opposite Viola Davis, who says when they were filming the movie, she had no idea he was sick with cancer. There was nothing about Chadwick's life that made you think that he was dying. And he lived in a way that many people don't. He, he, he harnessed every single moment. There's Oscar buzz for both Boseman and Davis's performance. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is on Netflix today. Also out today, the docuseries On Point follows students at New York's School of American Ballet as they try to perfect a performance of The Nutcracker. That's on Disney+. Plus. The man who played Boba Fett in the original Star Wars trilogy has died. British actor Jeremy Bullock also starred in dozens of British TV shows. He died of health complications at the age of 75. I had a dream. And hopefully multiple Grammy winner Billie Eilish got everything she wanted today. It's her birthday. She's 19. Jason Athenson, ABC News. Hollywood. At Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, they understand that when faced with difficult and challenging times, it's a comfort to know that we'll get through this together. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union is committed to keeping not only their members safe, but also their dedicated employees. They're following CDC guidelines, protocols, and social distancing at all of their facilities. They may have changed some of their usual ways of doing business, but they haven't changed how they treat their members. Their safest services are available through drive-up, ATM, telephone, easy banking, mobile banking by phone or appointment. Lobbies are currently open in the Skowhegan and Farmington branches, and with the holidays just around the corner, Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union has a reason to brighten your season with their holiday loan special going on now through December 31st. Just ask any of their friendly and knowledgeable loan officers in Skowhegan, Farmington, Madison, Kingfield, or Stratton for complete details or online at f-sfcu.com. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, where their most important member is you. Member and CUA. The holidays may be here, but many of us still have work to do. And a coyote tractor from Whittemore and Sons can move that big pile of snow, transport that wood, and take care of all your other heavy duty winter jobs in no time. Coyote tractors are some of the toughest, most powerful, fuel efficient, technologically advanced tractors ever built. With all their uses, a coyote tractor is the gift that keeps on giving all year long. Even Santa has a tractor on his wish list this year. Check out the full line of tough and versatile compact tractors, attachments, implements, and accessories at Whittemore and Sons, your coyote tractor dealer, with dependable sales and service for over 50 years. If you have questions or want to schedule a pickup, just call us at 207. 207- 474-2591. Run ahead of the pack with a Coyote tractor from Whittemore and Sons on the Waterville Road in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family who cares. Whittemore and Sons Outdoor Power Equipment Hi, Seth Batty with Rockland Ford here. I'm pleased to announce that this year we're going to make Christmas special with our first ever Christmas is for Kids program. I know how special a program like this could be because when I was young, it saved many Christmases for my family and I am honored to finally give back. What we are going to do is touch the lives of 50 children and many families in the surrounding area by putting presents under the tree for kids that otherwise would not have a Christmas. These kids have been struggling with medical issues within their family and we are stepping up to help those 
who have helped us in the past. This month, when you buy a car at Rockland Ford, $100 will go towards this program to help purchase presents and food for these families. If you would like to help, call us at Rockland Ford to make your donation or come drop off presents in our drop box at Rockland Ford off Route 1 in Thomaston to help make this holiday season special. Interested in cutting your fuel oil bills by as much as 40%? Then call your Energy Kinetic System 2000 Premier Dealer. Cools, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. And ask about the System 2000. You can save up to 40% off your heating costs and have all the hot water you need with the System 2000 from Energy Kinetics. Whether you're planning on replacing your current boiler or building a new home, stop into the Cools showroom at 19 North Street in Waterville and see the System 2000 from Energy Kinetics. The System 2000 runs on oil or propane, can be converted between fuels with a simple burner change is whisper quiet and can save you up to 40% off your heating fuel cost. If you own an older boiler, help keep it running more efficiently with a cleaning and tune-up. And don't forget, when you need emergency service, call Hool's 24-hour service department at 872-6762. Hool's Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, your System 2000 Premier Dealer. Hi, it's Doug and Dan from Generators of Maine in Belgrade. Are you working from home? Will your children be home doing schoolwork? And you know how important it is to have access to the reliable power source. That's why you need a Kohler generator from Generators of Maine. Kohler generators deliver reliable power whenever yours goes out. And we're always happy to offer delivery and installation. Get prepared today for those upcoming power outages with a Kohler generator from Generators of Maine. Stop by our location in Belgrade. Visit online at generatorsofmaine.com and like us on Facebook. Don't let the year end without using the HSA dollars in your account. Contact Kennebec Eye Care in Waterville. Wouldn't you love to have new glasses, sunglasses, or computer glasses? How about a backup pair for emergencies? An extra pair to leave at work? Dr. Peter Parody, Dr. Carrie Kaplan, and Dr. Leslie Sobeck will expertly fit you with correct eyeglasses or contacts. So contact Kennebec Eye Care today, 216 Main Street in Waterville, online at kennebeceyecare.com. 8.58, Mike Violet Show, what's left of it? John James, Freedom Pep Rally is next. If you missed That's a Wrap with Ken Altshuler or Contact Sports with Dean Scontras, post them on the Facebook page here as soon as possible, facebook.com slash legacy1160wsKW. Monday, Waterville Mayor Nick Isgro, Mondays with the Mayor. That is coming up. Enjoy your weekend. And, of course, coming up, what happened there? Let's try... This, but that that just went and stopped with without any reason whatsoever. I hate it when that happens. All right, uh, coming up here, John, and his Freedom Pep Rally from that threw my timing right off. <laughs> his Freedom Pep Rally from nine until noon, and of course today being a thank Buddha, it's Friday. Friday that means conserving the main outdoors. Brought to you by the Sportsman's Alliance of Maine, David Trahan and Mike Shaw coming up at noon today. Again, enjoy your weekend. Have a great and safe weekend. Merry Christmas to you and yours. I'll see you back here bright and early Monday morning at 6. From the Home Auto Group Studios, Farmington Ford and Franklin Chrysler in Farmington. This is WSKW, Skowhegan, Augusta, Waterville, Legacy 1160. ABC News, I'm Andrew Dimber. Vice President Mike Pence receiving his coronavirus vaccine this morning in public, along with his wife Karen Pence and Surgeon General Jerome Adams. They got the Pfizer vaccine, but another drug maker's vaccine could soon be shipping. The FDA has communicated to Moderna that we expect to grant their emergency use authorization. That could come as soon as today. That's Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar speaking to ABC News. But right now, COVID-19 hospitalizations in the U.S. are at a record high for the 12th day in a row. Over 114,000 people are in hospitals. 885,000 people filed for unemployment last week. And with benefits set to run out at the end of the month, Congress is still working on a new economic relief deal. Microsoft says its analysis finds that seven other countries were targeted in the cyber attack that saw U.S. agencies breached. U.S. intelligence blames Russians for the attack.
This is ABC News. Add Jimmy Carter to the list of former presidents who say they're ready to get the coronavirus vaccine. The Carter Center releasing a statement saying after consulting with his doctors, President Carter is looking forward to receiving the COVID-19 vaccine when it's available to him. All former presidents have now said they will get the vaccine. It's unclear if Carter will do it publicly. Lionel Moyes, ABC News. But in Detroit, the coronavirus is now blamed for the death of a popular member of law enforcement, the Wayne County Sheriff. Being Napoleon was so much to so many people, beloved, 